In the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln's Secretary of State bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Big Rays, the Alaskan outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Rays has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. Check out their new exclusive line of Aurolic waders. Big Rays for all your outdoor gear and rugged work attire. BigRays.com. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. TheTreehouseAK.com located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects that may be habit-forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate the vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek, upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, Alaska's year-round professional property maintenance team. Services include weekly lawn care, custom landscaping, fertilizing, weed control, turf repair, and more. Schedule your free estimate at lawnproak.com. Alaska's OG Cider Company, Double Shovel, crafting gluten-free colonial-style ciders, founded as a healthier non-inflammatory brew option. Drop by their pop and tap room in Anchorage off of 58th and Arctic or visit the second location in Kodiak. Double Shovel, award-winning ciders. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at backcountryhunters.org. Wait, is this the road? Oh. Mayor, man, come on, man. You're supposed to be ready to go, man. The show started. We've been all sitting here for two hours and then... It's like 20 seconds. You see, oh, shit. You see how when we, we made fun of his big soda last time he came with a smaller one? <laughs> oh, that's a small forgot, one? forgot the Sweet. cup. Polar oh, pop. you remember the one that you would see Floyd? Oh. Who remembers Floyd? Hell yeah, I remember Floyd. Remember Floyd? Floyd? You remember Floyd? I don't know. The original panhandler, the dancing panhandler, Floyd. He'd always be on Spinard in Minnesota. Oh. And he was just, he would never dance. All he had was this huge, he didn't even ask for money. No. Nah. He had a huge thermos that uh-huh. they used to sell, like the Seven yeah, Eleven Super yeah. Duper Magooper gulp. It's like looks like a the Megla, cosmic the gulp, Me, the Megla gulp. <laughs> yeah, big gulp, eh? Yeah, the, it was a big gulp. The gulps gulping another gulp. <laughs> yeah, so he was the originator so, so of that. Did. The Floyd. Floyd. Ooh. Yeah. Is that the it. dude that like had a house? Was like panhandling, and making so much money, he bought a house. I think so. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, I remember. I went to that. school with him, dude. He's your age? Yeah. No way. St. Bart's? No Saint way. Bart's, dude. Really? We're we talking about... 
Floyd the um yeah he was a pan it was a, no he was Alaska nah, native yeah okay he there's was a, always smiling and he was always dancing okay there's another one <coughs> no this is like back in like the eighties no nah, there's a there's a current one nineties sits out at Takanu no it would have been yeah sits nineties like, sits out milk crate panhandles you gotta pull that up a little bit closer. sits on a milk crate and panhandles but he's a uh. Uh, Investment baker? No, he owns a um, <laughs> uh, contracting contracting company. Oh, really? Hundred oh. percent. That's funny. Good for him. Yeah. No, oh, man, making it yep. work. Good yep. for him. I guess. <laughs> it's easy money. Why Where'd not? you get a milk crate? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Went to store and bought it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you didn't buy it. So you were you were asking about that the West Sisitna Access yeah. Industrial Corridor. I just started looking. Well, the at full this breakdown thing. is on the back of that uh, information document there. But long story short, it's just to get easier access to, I guess, the community in general that resides out there. This Ultimately. is the road system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big controversial thing. Yeah. I, I can't give you the details. I just heard yeah, bits and pieces, but I, I know it's super controversial well, out there. That kind of I, I don't some, know if we're ready to no I discuss some, it. I haven't even looked at it at all. No, no, no. I don't want to go into details. But do you know the gist of it? I, I I talked to the guy briefly at the sportsman show in this this uh-huh. spring. That was Pro Road. Uh huh. Where's he um, live? I, I didn't ask those questions. Can I see that? Does that it show far. where it goes? Yeah, it goes up to Happy Valley. It ends at Happy Valley. But uh. Anyway, Which is he, a while ways up there. It's like past whoa. this point now. He had some great information on who to contact and where to go, and 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 it was a great opportunity because I got some contact information to get some people that are a little more educated on that mm. on both sides. Obviously, BHA had their opinion on the matter, which was uh, to not put it in. Um, but what is it for? Is it for a mine? It's access, general oh, access. Oh, it's just a, just access road? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so what's interesting is like at least like when you're flying that area and like looking at where there's private land like on Onyx or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know a lot about this in, in terms of the project. Just I saw where the route was. A lot of that is private land. Oh, it says it goes to a mine. Oh, there is a mine at the end? Yeah, of course. Oh, there you go. So, but it, there's yeah, a lot of there's, private there's land be, up near there, you know, already. But listen, yeah. guys, America needs to start doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got to do stuff. I, I it imagine. It things like that to do stuff. I, I imagine there's, for the folks that, you know, call that home, in a nutshell, you probably have 50-50 split on folks that want it and don't want it. Or, like, there's, like, all kinds of, like, remote cabins up in there that have mm-hmm. strips, you know, and they fly in all the time, mm-hmm. too. Like, no, those people want this. Probably not. Yeah, that's how I know Probably about. Not. That's, I, I don't know many details, but that's how I know about. I've heard the controversial. Yeah. It's the people that own the land BHA out there. Boys they don't want the it the knowledge on us when, when they brought that in um, several months Oh, back. they brought this in? Yeah, they just have our little collection on the table over cool. there. Yeah, it would be dope to talk to someone. um <clears throat> That knows more about it, but yeah. there is a mine. Yeah, because I didn't see that any gold now. mine. Yeah. Nova's Minerals is still uh, a gold mining go. claim. Yeah, is what it says. Mm. Is it active? Yeah, <clears throat> it says industrial quarter. So yeah. industrial access. Uh, well, anyway, just, anyway, yeah. we'll get people on both sides to come talk about this. So we can be pretty legit. wild. Like in thirty years, if there was an actual road system, and then that was another access road to. Um, to a lot of there's a lot of public good public land out there too. Well, and, and um, on the positive side, not you know whoever lives out there, I'm sure they don't want that, and people that are anti mine don't want it. Um, but if you look at a positive side, like any type of access from the road is getting crowded. Yeah, by so many people. Like oh, you yeah. look at the 40 mile herd and what's happened with Nalchina herd oh, and yeah. what's happened with all these other stuff. Having Who's another road to a different area. Maybe yeah. it spreads the people thinner. Well, that that and is you know it's infrastructure, right? I mean, wouldn't that be considered yeah. part of our infrastructure and road access and things like that? And 
that's never a bad thing, is, I guess. Would it be open to the public? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's got to. Maybe when they're, yeah. I mean, if it's not open. I mean, that was the main thing we yeah, talked the, about. The with dude's about, pitch um, was pretty much leaning a lot toward that. With the so. uh, the um, Ambler. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's going to be public. public, Right. Yeah. Man, tonight we were supposed to have Forrest Crouppen, uh on the show. He had to reschedule. Unfortunately, work as um, he's in high demand as a helicopter pilot doing surveying. Mm-hmm. They worked them them folks pretty hard. Um, he's been working the Ambler Road all summer. Mm. So I met him in the spring before he was okay. leaving, and he's like, "Man, I'm going on this really cool job, and it's the Ambler Road, and I know a lot about it." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, we just heard all the." You know the one side, the one side, mm-hmm. um, you know, spearheaded with the BHA's um, perspective on it, uh, and the local person that and local perspective that would be on affected it. Yeah. by it. Yep. Yeah, and um, that was great to hear, and I was just really, really excited to hear that side of a person working it. He he doesn't necessarily. Who knows? Maybe he does have a a thought on what he thinks of it, but. He's a contractor doing a job, yeah. and, and they're surveying, right? Because they're going to continue doing that. Um, and it sounds like it's a they're pretty passionate about trying to make that road happen. The he folks is? that uh, no, oh. the folks that are involved in building it. Oh well, um, yeah, the ones that are. Gonna I mean, look, they're, off they're, they're 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 paying for surveying now, right? They're right. they're putting all that money up and probably yeah. feeling like they got a good swing at it, but not putting any personal opinion on that. Just saying it was, you know. It was interesting. Well, we'll talk to him about yeah. it and see what he says. Yeah. yeah. And That's our goal is to talk to people on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and yeah. then let everyone make their yeah. own decision on yeah. what they feel. We need to bring yeah. the pro ambler person in. Yeah. The For sure. Well, well, local, yeah. but yeah. pro ambler person. Yeah. We'll get different angles and everybody can get their listening on yeah. that. And and we'll do the we'll same with the West, West Sioux. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Doing our best no, to get the be, information out. Cool. Yeah, this is saying that at least at the time that they wrote this, they said it's kind of inconsistent on the message, but that the public access would only be to the big seal. So everything, hmm. you know, west of there, according to this, wouldn't wouldn't be public. That hmm. doesn't sound cool. Mm. Yeah, just pretty limited. It's like for the sure. least cool thing I heard today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the least coolest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our intention today, guys, uh, we brought a bunch of new gear that we've been using, various from bags to sleeping bags to little smaller stuff. Um, our goal in this episode is to kind of run through um, some of the stuff we've been using for the last year or so. Um, <clears throat> we like to talk about things after we've used it and give you an honest opinion on what we feel is good about whatever we, we're using and what maybe can be improved upon. Um, so that's our goal here. We're not going to go into depth with like, you know, measurements and weights and all that stuff. (laughs) Yeah. We're not the spec guys. You can look that up yourself on the internet. Full geek. Um, but this is just some stuff that we, we have purchased, um, to use, um, so that we can gifted to use. Some stuff has been gifted to us to, to test out and try, um, so that you can get your honest opinion and that's something that we like to do if there's any other companies out there that have something that's like hey man give this a try let me know what you think we're totally open for that um we do sometimes go more in depth in some certain things but like really we're not going to do a whole show on like you know one bag so we're trying to combine a whole bunch of things and kind of run through um what we've been using um so that you guys can kind of get an idea if there's something cool or you've heard about it but you're not sure about it kind of give you a, a little idea of if we if we like it or not yeah that about it mm-hmm. nice little breakdown testing it out and talking about it on that we are welcoming you to episode 132 Ooh. 2023 gear review sesh Gear, rev- gear overview. Overview, gear review. Gear you. Yeah. Gear, gear. <laughs> That's a new brand. Gear you. <laughs> gear you. <laughs> gear you. Trademark that show. Oh, shit. With the R. Um, the the first thing I actually wanted shit. to start with <laughs> is the, uh, there's a new player in the game. Oh. The salsa game. Oh, oh <laughs> open up with it. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So uh, the mayor, 
No, I, mean, I don't know. Should I put it on blast yet? Okay, well. I mean, you can. I okay. mean. Well, the mayor's yeah, coming up with his own uh, salsas. Um, and he has given us graciously different uh, batches of some of his small batch salsas to try. He brought you a couple mm-hmm. other ones. Um, I've only tried the Rolling Smoke one, which I thought was spectacular. It was amazing. The spice wasn't too wasn't much. Isn't that a fitting name for it? Because the, to me, the, it was oh, what? The, the Rolling Ro- Smoke. The name Rolling Smoke. You say for fitting? The, yeah, fitting for oh. it. Well, because yeah, the yeah. first thing that smacks your tongue is the smoke. Well, yes. yeah. Like the smoky uh, flavor in a salsa was like, boom, my head exploded, dude. As soon like, as you said it, I knew, like, oh, that's the name right there. Yeah, that it's was perfect. Awesome. Do you just, like, inject some smoke in there? <laughs> no, 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 that's no. <laughs> <laughs> just baste it. <laughs> dude, I, sometimes I'll uh, get my basting brush out there, the mop. Uh, the mop. Yeah. Do you use like the you gotta mop the, the all natural what's the what's the mop uh, ingredient made out of? Uh freshly cut sheep wool. Oh, feathered down? Yeah. Permed? Oh. <laughs> Damn. Horses, Slightly horses not, not too much, not too much. But is there there's something because when you watch some of those shows and they're basing, they all have like their own like a sprig of something or mm-hmm. like something's made out of some sort of straw or something. I don't even know what it is. I'll tell you right now, I don't I'm not basing anything. Okay, I just thought the mayor. Would no, know. no. But anyway, compliments to the smoke. That. One, this, that one is yeah, it's really delicious. Smoke. I literally ate three fourths of the can mm-hmm. or the jar in one sitting, and um, it is smoky. My wife was she liked the flavor, but it was a little too smoky mm-hmm. for her. Yeah. Um. So if you're gonna get some of that, just know that it's smoke delicious. Yeah. Smoke daddy. Smoke daddy. Heavy on the yeah. smoke. Heavy but for her, I mean. I don't know if she's listening. She don't listen. Okay, well. But you can hmm. tell me. I'll tell her. For her, I mean. <laughs> we're we're going to make a, a city slicker version. Yeah. That she's, city she's like yeah. that. Oh, slicker. yeah. Yeah, no I smoke. Like that. Just straight mm-hmm. peppers, vegetables. That's it. Mm-hmm. She'll like that. Cook it down. So like it's that. awesome. Well, yeah. I was telling you she likes yeah. more of a, um, I think she likes more of like a vinegar based. Mm. That has like a more. uh I don't like a tart versus a spice. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. You can't please everyone all the time, man. You can't. Listen, yeah. You, you can't. Know, you're, you know. doing, you're doing really well. I got my four that I'm rolling with, and that's it. Yeah. Like, that. It, I will tell you, though, uh, we were talking earlier on the show. I'm not like a connoisseur of foods. I don't I don't call myself a foodie. People call themselves foodies. Today, you're kind of a foodie, Mayor. Yeah, I'm a foodie. Yeah, you're a foodie for sure. You qualify. Um, <laughs> if you got a cheeseburger tattoo on your arm, true, mm-hmm. true. Where's that cheeseburger <laughs> from? From my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks from like your the, kitchen. It looks good. <clears throat> Wait looks, till that glizzy's done. It looks Ooh. like the classic. What's on that uh, side? The glizzy dog. Oh the, shit! It's gonna be Chicago oh, dog. Nice. Badass. Not an anchor town. Huh? This right here. Yeah. Yeah. I put the logo and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That cheeseburger reminds me of uh, Hamburger Haven on Muldoon. You, all, you ever get oh, there? Oh, that's a hidden gem. Hamburger it, Haven. I never a lot of there. people don't know about that. It exists yeah. still. It still yeah. exists, yeah. Yeah. Their double cheese looks exactly like that. Uh, really? Oh, man. It's still there. Wow. Okay. I have to check that out. Milkshakes and cheeseburgers, it. dude. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think it's like Miss Kim or something runs that joint. Yep. No lettuce, <clears throat> no tomatoes. So the four different sauces you have the smoked one. Habanero yeah, so one? there's the the smoke, which is you know jalapenos. Then there's a the habanero, um, hatch green chilies, <laughs> and then the other one will be the one without the smoke. It'll be mm. jalapenos, but not smoke. Oh, yeah, gotcha. The city slicker. Yeah, I know yeah. you brought us some yeah. samples that have some fruit. That's not in the plans. That's just like no. testing some stuff. No, out. that's just for. I'm gonna try this hatch green chili one. Yeah. That one sounds delicious. Yeah, some chips in here. Hatch green. This would be I'll, uh, crunchy. Good, oh, that, not a, not good, obnoxious man. at all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll touch base this yeah. week. Yeah. All right. I can trade some ciders. There we Don't go. even sweat it. Don't even sweat oh, it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah, I'll get it to you. And then I got that. Uh, I don't know if your wife ate that. She hasn't cracked into it yet. No. No, not yet. What was it? That's what I'm waiting on. Uh, I don't, he, What's the name of it? It's called Finna Denny. It's like a uh, like a rice sauce, yeah, dipping right. sauce. Oh, I didn't Where's know that it? name? Where's it originated oh. from? I'm busting that out of the hunt too. Um, the Filipino, 
I don't know what you how you lump uh, like Filipino Vietnamese yeah. area. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Southern and Asia. And what, what's in it? South Asia. It's a vinegar soy sauce based. Um, Almost adobo ish. Or no? No. No. Uh-uh. No. No. More more vinegar than there is soy sauce. Okay. Like it's just like putting soy sauce on your rice, you know. Yeah. But yeah. it's got um. Serrano peppers in it Ooh. and and onions. All right. Yeah, I was thinking. Could you marinate something in it? Hundred percent. Okay. So bomb on okay. like chicken and stuff. Yeah. And if you're making halibut. Ooh. Oh really? Oh yeah. Really? yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Marinate it and then cook it, or like drizzle it on it. Right? Either one. Afterwards. The either. the key with marinating it though, if you're going to use that as a marinade, because it's got the vinegar and the soy in it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You don't want to do it too long because then it burns yeah. the actual meat. Yeah. So it right. makes it kind of... It caramelizes it, and burns it. kind of cooks right? it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Burning is probably the wrong word for to describe it, but it'll it'll cook your meat, essentially. Mm-hmm. The acidity will. Yeah, it'll begin to cook it. Like yeah, a, like so you a, don't want to marinate it too long, but enough for it to just kind like of soak fl- like in. Like a flash yeah. marinade of some sort? Yeah. yeah. With halibut, I found the easiest way is if you're grilling it, to just base it as you grill it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or if you're making it like... It just soaks in and cooks. Yeah, if you're making like halibut tacos or halibut with your rice, mm-hmm. just cook your halibut like on a cast iron pan. And when you go to break it up into chunks, just drizzle it on mm. there. Mm. And I wonder just let you, it caramelize on the good. bottom. I wonder, oh, I wonder if you could like ceviche it, you know? Like if you could actually do a chemical cook since it has so much vinegar in it. You know, if it probably, does it have the acidity, and then I will you, bring you a jar. You could try it. it seems a cool idea. We can touch the P. We'll test the pH, and we'll know. I picked one up too. I found one. Oh yeah, yeah. Sweet. Where I told you? Where'd you? No, go? no. I, where you told me they don't have one. Did what? you go where I told you? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh really? They didn't have what I needed. Okay. They had to some other stuff. Big old three hundred dollar. Uh, oh okay. You wanted just a dipstick. Yeah, I went to my man spot over here, and okay. eighty dollars <laughs> later, I'm, yeah. I'm out the door. Those are good though. <laughs> Those last. What uh, what was the pH? Oh, I didn't test these. Oh, okay, they, right. these ones are already canned, so I didn't want to pop the yeah, lids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need it for my next uh-huh. batch. All right. Because this know stuff I just targeting? give to you guys, and it doesn't last long enough yeah, to yeah. even go yeah. bad. Right. Uh, Definitely my target not. is anything below under four. Will make it shelf stable. Uh huh. So that's the key. Oh, for well, under four is good enough. Yeah, oh, yeah. Three point eight is kind of ideal. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, you're safe under four. Yeah, my rule for cider is three eight. Like it, nothing can ever be above three eight because of that. That's I think my goal is going to be three eight. Yeah, because that seems to be, and I'm not doing this on a huge scale. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but yeah. that's like the so industry the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And industry, big scale or not, like you don't want someone getting no, sick. No, 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 yeah. no. You know how we need so. this packaged? I just thought about this because we'd be going out and doing these sheep hunts and mountain hunts, and we have. Oh yeah. And you don't want to bring that glass. We need it in like a tear, like a tear yeah. away. Yeah. Almost like a maybe it would be good in like, like the a tuna small fish bags. yeah or like a small like the yeah like the like tuna the fish small bag mylar or bag. the small um like Heather's Choice ones that are small. Yep. Something like that because then you could open it, use it, close it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying with the with the resealable yeah, thing. Yeah. So I thought about that right because we were talking to Tyler, and he said. The best way to eat chili cheese Fritos is to just let them sit in your pack and smash them. Yeah. Mm. Right? So you figure chili cheese Fritos with salsa. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. Be good. So you just bust that bag out of mm. already smashed up Fritos. Mm. Mix them together. Put some Pull salsa on there. Yes. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, You're you know what would even be better? The packaging that's like... Um, like the applesauce, it's like a little cold. Oh, oh you can yeah, squeeze it and, and then, it has the lid you can take off and yeah. reseal it. Oh, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, and that'd yeah. be perfect. Yeah, you're getting into big time stuff okay. there. I know. I, I know, like it. I, I like it though. It's I good. Know. Just it's for good. the future. Yeah, you heard it here first. There okay. are those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
for for <laughs> us though, yeah. you can go over to the the butcher supply in Mountain View, and you can get those like little um, vacuum seal bags that have the zipper. Yes, that reseal. Have, yeah, yeah, have yeah. That's my spot. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, best. they'll do some custom stuff too. I think. Oh, they will custom size stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I want it to look just like a fillet, so you don't like. What we can do is we'll save space. we'll save all the old applesauce things that the kids eat. <laughs> <laughs> figure out how to clean them yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Just Windex. <laughs> I've been wondering if there's a way to can it because glass you don't want to take out. Yeah. When you're out. Yeah. Sheep hunting. Yeah. But is there a way to... Because those are all water bath. Mm-hmm. So how do you put it in something that can withstand a 40-minute water bath? <clears throat> I mean, you can, you can can the same way with cans. You know? That's what we used to have before jars when I was a kid. Yeah, but do you want it in a can? It's got to be something that you can close again. Right. Because yeah. if you don't eat it all. Unless you make the little packets, ch- 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 the Taco Bell size. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 there, there, there we go. Damn, yeah. Dang. There you go. Like That's four, what you need. four times bigger. Put some quotes on the front of them, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. There we go. All That's the even better. Are gonna be chasing them. Yeah. Because then yeah. you just pull out one for your meal. Your coming. Oh. <laughs> for your first meal of the night, just carry a breakfast burrito up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some yeah. salsa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Salsa. <laughs> we got, we got Take a, a beer and a burrito <laughs> and his salsa, dude, just like the first night. When we got out of uh, the plane to go hike, Jake pulled out a foot long um, subway. Oh. Oh, and was yeah. like, here's your half. I was like, oh, motherfucker, I didn't even think about this. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she has so loaded up. Right before. It's yeah. a good idea. That was a, it was a super good idea. Yeah, fill yeah. up with some calories before you go. Oh, it tasted it so sand. fucking good, you know. <laughs> and you're flying all day and shit. It's like you don't want to eat a mountain house right now. Well, I like that you're doing it, man. I, I wish you the best on that. And as long yeah. as, you know. I'm gonna do it here regardless. Whether yeah, you still it's just fun. I bet, right? Yeah, I, I do it for fun because I like to cook stuff and yeah, experiment and I'm excited I got three about guinea pigs that. right here. So yeah, sounds well, great. Well, I, I wanted to finish my little statement before about the foodie thing. Like, I feel like I have a good um, opinion on when. I, good, I taste good food because I like everything. I eat everything. I'm not a picky eater. I eat shitty food, good food, and I have good taste for good food. And there's something about that salsa when it hit my tongue was unique and different. And I was like, I could eat this almost every day if it, it was put in front of me like at lunch hour or something. Yeah. You know, it was that good. And uh, it, it's going to go somewhere. You're a talented dude. You're making some good stuff. Well, I appreciate it's it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be great. Thanks. Like, no doubt about it. Yeah. Should we throw it on the website? Just <laughs> <laughs> also. I want the packets, man. I, got I think you could lock the game down with that. Oh, yeah. With the packets. Yeah. Just they're all in all the, the REIs. And then, and then you could just have to buy a pack of 20 mm-hmm. packets. Yeah. Yep. You know, like minimum order. <laughs> Be you're like spooning. I wonder how many packets. <laughs> how many Dude, packets? You, you, you could, it close you could like sell that. those kind of expensive because, you know, backpacking or packing stuff's a little bit. More pricey, especially when you get good stuff, hot yeah. sauces and salsas and things. Well, there's there the is other no salsas, but <laughs> the other one is <laughs> that, to be. that you've been, been bringing out sometimes. Those little tiny ones, yeah, that's that have the about. little screw thing, mm-hmm. like the sriracha. Yeah, it's like a little tiny one, like this yeah. big. That's mm-hmm. another good idea, but that's more like us. Yours is more salsa versus like sauce. That's well, like right, one right. one bite. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you just do like I do the tzatziki. You just make the hole bigger. Uh-huh. So it comes out. Yeah, yeah, I can you know see I mean? yours like McDonald's salsa, breakfast burrito salsa packs. Yeah. Like, like that. Yes. How this big is, are this those? is like wet and tomatoey and like the salsa texture that you're that yeah. you like and, and it's about like about like that. So it's like double mayonnaise or something? Uh like what? Like a double no, it'd be, mayonnaise. It'd be, be like the same size as a mayonnaise. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like when I get a McDonald's breakfast burrito, I used to get them all the time. I went through like three packets on one burrito. Oh, and yeah. I was like yeah, right. Just the full dump, <laughs> which I would definitely do with some Fairbanks fire for sure. How do you guys think I should package? Because I'm gonna take a bunch of your, those that salsa you gave me on the hunt, but I don't want to bring the jar. I put it. I in would a, bring the jar. I put just it. Bring in the a, jar on the. I put it in an empty. What do I do with that? An thing? empty mayonnaise jar. 
Yeah. Or like an empty plastic one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, use a... You're trying to be use a... Cheap, um, like a small water bottle? No. The empty jar did make... Oh. Like one of them little small ones? Just a, a Yeti? Yeah, put it like a Yeti. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it'll stay cold too for a little yeah. while. But... um. Apple applesauce, bro. No, my mind is went blank. I feel like relish, because a relish has a bigger opening. Oh, because the relish comes out in chunks. Uh, okay. The packet of the relish, you mean? No, 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 no. like the, the squeeze, squeeze bottle. bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. shit, that's a really good idea. Yeah, because you Fucking want the chunks bottle? of the peppers and the yeah, onions yeah. to come out, right? Oh, yeah. Dude, there you are. Next level, bro. Dude, Just, I got a whole. He's pump. like, y'all, y'all want salsa? Put a little tomato paste in there to thicken it up, so when you squeeze it, it doesn't all. Put some moose blood. Whatever works for oh, you guys. Shit. Thicken it up. Just some iron. <laughs> I never worry about the glass. If you listen to this and you're coming yeah. up to go hunting with Daniel, do not because <laughs> you're bringing a yeti in, <laughs> and that yeti's gonna come out, you know, empty. Yeah, and you just throw them in there. That's because we like bring like all the Bloody Mary stuff and it's like mm. all glass. Like, okay. There's so much glass that goes in, but it yeah. all comes out. Yeah. So, and it doesn't break as long as you pack your cooler, right? Yeah, yeah. all tight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, those, and it's those already sealed. Jars, good to go. Yeah, they're pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can for the most part, you can kind of drop them on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I drop many at F Street and they don't break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, those, those only in the shower, baby. <laughs> well, and what's great when they, when they do break, they only break in like three pieces. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, they're like not shattering. Yeah. You know, they're right. just fucking That's yep. true. stay in one yeah. spot. Yeah, so you can still kind of scoop up the remains. Right. Yeah. yeah. I get a shard. Yeah. I think all my drinking glasses are canning jars at the house. Well, I think about the ride that you guys are going to do, I and I would probably highly recommend not glass in a cooler, even though you pack it right out of your height. But the empty mayo jar seems pretty legit to me. Oh, no, that's a great idea, as too. As far as, like, yeah. And you can discard it when you're done. You know, it's not like a yeah. one that you're going to keep and clean or anything. How long are you going for? Done. Like 11 days. Well, now you go through that mayo at the stand, bro. Man. You got like a big big tub left over you could just donate or what? I did. I, I gave it to the other homie. Oh, that's right. That's right. I had a big tub of a bunch of stuff. You just give it to all the... I had enough mustard to last you the rest of your life. Mm. <laughs> oh, horseradish one? No, this is the regular yellow. Yeah. I did have the horseradish. Did you one overbuy this year ground. or what? I just don't want to run out. I just don't want to go every day. I mean, I still go every day to Costco, but you know, well, some yeah. things you got a special order. Oh, right. You yeah. know, like the stone ground and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And it comes in a case of four. And, you know, if you only go through three. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So you special order it from Costco? No. Now I'm about to get my, uh, what is it? Mo- mocha head day? Mocha head day? Yeah. What's that? What is that? The thing where you grind the. Oh, the little round thing? Yeah, the stone, the vault. Oh, the stone, the the masher thing? Yeah. Um, That's got a name. Yeah, it's like mocha head day. I yeah, heard that. Look it up. That's what it's, yeah. That'll be cool. Oh. This yeah, is I'm about to start selling stone ground mustard too now. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Making mustard and salsa now. Just put it in grinder. Google. It'll tell you how to spell it. Yeah. Got to make some out horseradish. What's it called? Horseradish mustard. Like mocha. Head, M-O-L-C-A. M-O-L? Yeah, just put mocha. Mocha. Right there, right there. Yep. Mocha. I told you, man. Google knows what we're talking about. Oh, they oh. Got you. The, the, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Grind on. Yes, sir. That's what the okay. homie Kendall used to use. Do his, uh, oh, I bet. Do his uh, spicy, spicy. Oh. If you go down for us gringos, pestle and mortar, or Ooh, mortar yum, and pestle, dude. Yeah, Damn, that looks good. Oh, so they grind. Oh, I didn't know that they actually use it for putting the stuff in too. Well, obviously, I didn't know that, but it's mo- mo- only for. I mean, mostly for gr- like pounding it in, yeah. right? Yeah, right, right. Well, there's some cool ones, man. Look at this one out of just a stone, river stone. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're wild. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a real deal. Yeah. Molcajete. Molcajete. Next level? Yeah. Cooking in preparation or what? Are they spendy? Uh, no, not they're not that bad. How about the salsa? Look at the salsa over there. How about this one? <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Some guac or what? It's the size of a four-wheeler. <laughs> Golly. It's a weird, weird looking thing, dude. Oh, that's funny. 
<laughs> oh man well i wish you the best of luck with that stuff it's yeah, really good yeah um if anyone wants to try can they hit you up on your on, your up on the gram uh, on the gram on the instagram mm -hmm. what yeah. is the the, the underscore mayor right now it's uh yeah something like that the underscore mayor underscore yeah. 907 and remember just we are still in research and development here yeah so, so yeah. you're looking for uh, right. product testers 100 <laughs> percent Product got it. 100 percent got it got it yeah it's all you can eat well it's free so for yeah. now for, for now. now can i see that juanitas are probably the best chips oh juanitas bomb. They're bomb i mean is there something better <laughs> i don't know one here when it comes to tortilla chips yeah I don't know. It's just thin and it's just what, perfect what, salty, yeah. and it, ha it has like a little bit of that oil left over. Yes, yeah. Yeah. you know. And then when you God, get one so where good. a lot of the salt stuck to the oil, yeah. oh, oh, so good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys or the ones that in peanut butter, right? Oh, oh I haven't. Sounds Ooh. good. Sounds God, horrible. You love some peanut butter, huh? <laughs> just be ready to choke though. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. got Where's chips stuck in your throat. The milk at? <laughs> it is really good though. Just a little bit. Just a little, little bit. Yeah. Down in A delicious. down in A Z they got those uh what is it, fries? That grocery store yeah. chain, and you go in there and you can get the freshly made tortilla chips mm. and they're like Juanitas, mm. but like right, you know, yeah. co barely uh, cooling. Yeah. Have That's you ever seen the Texas little like is. uh single serving? Juanitas? No. They come like the Lay's. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. remember where I saw them, but damn. The next just time like I, the pack for your lunch, you know? Next time I go ham on that the salsa, awesome. I'm just going to get Fritos, the big scoops. Oh, so mm -hmm. damn. And I'm going to just kill, open two <laughs> so, bites. So, I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm eating Basically, the salsa at the house, dinner. I'm, I'm eating it with Fritos. Oh, really? Yeah, I buy the bad family size of scoops. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because uh, don't get me wrong. Juanitas are bomb. Yeah. But that's a whole different thing. But you got to dip. I'm trying to just. The Juanita just breaks yeah. if you don't. It's Have so you. That's my gripe with Ever Juanita. scooped peanut butter <laughs> with Frito <laughs> scoops? Ooh, I bet Holla. Damn. This <laughs> guy. <laughs> nah, man. Me and, me and my four year old. My palate we is sophisticated. Eat our house, we eat ourselves out of house and home with the peanut butter. Well, okay, let me ask you that. What is your peanut butter? Because I know uh, people that are peanut butter people, I'm, like my wife. I'm jiffy, uh, jiffy creamy. Okay. I like chunky. I I have a small Gotta side chunk. I have a side, small side chunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In there, so we got yeah. the creamer, mm -mm. the creamy for us to eat. Then there's the sandwich one, and then there's my side. <laughs> Four <crunchy>. peanut butters. <laughs> Three sheets. Damn. Yeah. Uh, I hate chunky. Honey really roasted. It's yeah. foul. Jiffy. I love it with the mm -hmm. scoops, man. I like. Smooth, oh, creamy peanut butter crunch with the scoop crunch, mm. double crunch. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> peanut butter crunch. Man, people yeah, driving crunchy, right now, like man, these guys right? are with starving. Nuts. Extra crisp. So then you got the <laughs> oh, scoops. They're gotcha, gotcha. crunchy. It's like really crunchy. I it's can't so. get down with that, man. Man, just try it. All right, uh, just one time. I'll definitely try it. <laughs> I've never tried that. Yeah. Have you had the honey roasted? You guys ain't smoking enough weed at night before you go to bed, man. You get real crazy. <laughs> 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 That's the problem. You get real creative and your waistline grows. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Like How's the uh, weight loss going, actually? Talking about that. I, I mean, what has it been? 10 days or something? Same as me. Working on it. Lost a I, pound, gained a pound. I'm, I'm feeling been, skinny, though? I was actually... Uh, so coming off the caribou hunt, I had put on like four or five miles a day. So we were getting some good hiking in. Yeah. So I weighed myself, came back, and so I had like... I think I lost like four or five pounds. I thought, ah, a lot of water weight, whatever. So then we did the weigh-in, and then here we are 10 days later, same same mm -hmm. weight. Yeah. So yeah, I think for me, some more measures have to be taken. Mm. Um, intermittent fasting has been great. I've been 100% solid on that. Even not, not drinking beer during the week, I haven't been doing that. I was going to drink a beer tonight. I actually decided not to. I have a ginger beer, so I'm sticking to that. I think that's one thing that I could really cut out yeah. was beer drinking. And yeah. I, I've been beer drinking a lot in the last two years. Every, pretty much since we came out of the vid and started this, mm -hmm. man. Beer's been going down. Beer's been going down. <laughs> and it ain't just beers here. It's like going to the cidery. It's going to King Street or ABC. Yeah, and then like it's just going in beer. You want to get a beer? Yep. Yep. yep yes, I do. Always want to get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Alexi and I actually drank vodka soda this past weekend. Nice. To try to... Light and tight? Light and tight. 
Nice. nice. All mixed up in your Yeti cup? Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 That was good. Good for you, man. You gotta make some gotta make some changes someplace, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Man, it's tough. Get ready for that hockey tough. season, man. Really Get ready three for weeks that hockey out. season. Yeah. Yeah, they're dangling. That's right. Yeah. And I haven't skated. Yeah. Has any of us skated? No one has. Probably tangy. I don't ever yeah, skate. No. The rest of us, no. <laughs> yeah. My kid's skating, though. Oh, yeah. yeah they're, they're balls to the walls now. I bet. Yep, it's on. How many days a week is it? Right now, it's only three. Okay. Yeah. But uh, there'll be workouts and other stuff that's coming. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be. Do they do some dry land? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They'll probably work out at Elite pretty frequently. I know uh, homie's got the thing going to Body Renew, like the Athletes Academy. Um, I guess they're gonna be, they're gonna be busy. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's exciting. It's mm-hmm. good. It's winter. At least they're getting some exercise and staying Hell fit. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that we're gonna run through here when we come back from the break, um, we're gonna we got maybe do some bags. Quite the pile there. Yeah, we have the uh, a couple of sage brush dry uh, bags, a backpack, um, like a, a hip bag, a camera yep. bag. Um, and then we have some Wrangle uh, gear, the Captain's Duffel, and I'm not sure what the other little one is called, but I brought that one too because I've actually been using that one a lot. Um, it's really nice. Um, we got the teepee that Jack really put to work, the Black Diamond teepee. Um, we have also the Sage Dr- Bride Rush uh, Scabbard. Gun Scabbard, yeah. Um, we have the Stary Pin. Did you end up getting the same one I had, the one you can recharge? Yeah, with? yeah. It, it, it seems like that's like the only one. Yeah, that's the one I get. Um, and then we have a sleeping bag. That's what I'm the, waiting the on. The Kafaru slick bag. Um, was it's like the size else? of my forearm, but apparently I can fit in there. Yeah, apparently it expands. It does. Stretch Pack it. small. Down, yeah. yeah. Was there something I was missing? Or is that it? I think you got Oh, yeah. there's like a... I got a little cool little trailer. Uh Easy peasy solution for tire changing. I want to show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah. Well, oh, and your trailer, trailer your release. Yeah, you know, I wanted to touch on. You know, we talk about apparel and gear and tents and trucking yeah, yeah. poles and boots and packs and everything. And you know, big part of it is equipment that gets your equipment there, trailers and things like that. So I have a cool little thing to share with folks that have trailers that uh, might make, you know, an inevitable situation when you could run the highway enough with a trailer. You're gonna have to. Change of spares. So. Fact. Fact. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, and it's we'll good and light and tight. I like that a lot. In a little bit. Yep. Might need to borrow that actually. Uh yeah. Those uh boys at Six Rob Lee's will let you borrow one for about one fifty. That's what it costs? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't think it's that much. Dang. I think it's like a hundred <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Dang. All right. I see how it is. <laughs> oh. oh, but thank you oh, on you the plug know. on the um with the trailer. Remember we I talked last night. So I ended up buying a new meat trailer. Oh, I, that's right. I went from the um, I went from the Rubbermaid uh, trough Horse thing, which worked trough. great. And yeah. It's awesome. It's an yeah. awesome beginner tra- trailer. Um, I loved it. I used it a lot for like the last like twelve years. Um, it's been everywhere. It's been great. But I got the chance to get one of the uh, Bosky um, stainless or aluminum, yeah, aluminum. aluminum. Um, mm-hmm. trailers. Yeah. Just yeah. beautiful trailer, um, but I noticed as I was packing for the moose hunt, um, it had a drain hole at the bottom, and I was like, I need something to plug that mm-hmm. up. So I measured it, and I called Brandon because he helped me get it from a, a friend. Um, and I was like, Ah, oh, did you see it? Maybe it was already part of it, and I didn't know if it came with it. And I tried to look it up online, and nothing said anything yeah. about it. Yeah. And I was gonna run up to wherever they sold it. And see if they had one, but it was closed. And he's like, you know what? Maybe a boat plug yeah. will fit. And boat it was plugs fit. perfect. Perfect. Money. It's a boat plug. Yeah, it's a boat plug. I've got one. Yeah, it's the one um, inch. You got the standard. Bosky meat wagon? Yeah. Okay. Got a double axle. Oh, oh you got the tandem. Yeah. Nice. yeah that's, nice. Legit. Oh. that's the next one. Yeah, that's where it's at. Yeah. Just, that just thing's floats, a fucking man. beast, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I lost my plug once. And then. Oh, just so it comes with one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when you buy them brand new, they come with a plug in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Does it come with a boat plug? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's That's actually a, a boat plug. Yeah, it's a boat plug. Okay. You can go to any marine store. Okay. Perfect. So and the get a, so like, hey, I need a plug. Uh, what is it? What's the? I forgot what the correct terminology is, but uh, it's like a drain plug for those things. 
Brennan knows what is it? What I just say the other day. My, I just call my drain, <laughs> my drain plugs. Yeah, but it's got some fake <laughs> plugs. We say drain Not plug, but it's the, it's the, it's when the cousin airs, of the butt plug. When so it's kind of weird. Uh, one, of, one of the plug kind of sores will yeah. come you know, in. You're be plugging like, the butts oh, or boats. Yeah. I'd know. Google it, but we don't know what's going to pop up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a regular, you can go West Marine and yeah. get a boat plug and yeah. screws right well, the, the, there. There was nothing open last night at 9.45 when I was like, I'm gonna go now. I'm on a yeah. mission. I'm yeah. gonna get this right. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna go. Nice shit. Walmart had it. Mine. Oh, Walmart nice. had all a bunch of different yep. kinds, oh, yeah. and I never yep. go to Walmart. Yeah. Like, it was actually it a pretty just, decent marine section. Um, yeah, they had a bunch of stuff, man. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm not plugging them, but Eagle River hidden gem. The Walmart and Eagle River. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet they do. I they bet. even blended in. I run a tight ship up there. Yeah, I bet <laughs> all those bougie Eagle River people is too too good to go to there. Yeah, man. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> about my people he didn't mean that he didn't mean that eagle river i'm just joking i love eagle i play on the eagle river hockey team that's okay shout out to eagle. the jalapenos we're coming for all you boys out there <laughs> all right all right <laughs> you gonna come support a game or what yeah when you have it at a normal hour not at well, wednesday men's at hockey's at not at normal <laughs> hours it's when? mondays at, mi- at midnight see what right. i'm saying <laughs> and then my alarm goes off four shift. hours later <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that cool. worked out, man. So that oh, was perfect. In. You pl- you did it from the from the rear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the outside. Um, cool. I bid it from the outside for now, yeah. And I was like, gosh, I do it from the other side. I don't know. Do you it from it. the it, do, do it, from it from the, the inside. inside. So you hooked it up to the your six by six, and it's all nice and level mm-hmm. and everything. That's tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I was curious what it's going to look like. Yeah, it looks like it's going to. I mean, it's got like right. a twenty five inch tire or something on it. Yeah, it's got a Stock, nice tire. So it should be, it should be elevated. Yeah, I'm gonna hook it up, and so I make sure that's legit. Nice. Yes, tomorrow, because I cool. think I I need to upgrade my uh, ball. It's a one and seven eighths. So I need to get because my old trailer was a one and seven eighths. So I need to switch it to the two inch. Yeah, I would. That's a two inch. It, word of advice to anybody with trailers, ATV, boat, utility, just change it all to one f in size. No shit. One size. Yeah. All right. For anybody out there, it's like I'm buying my first trailer, my first thing, two inch, all of it, unless you're running something big, and you need to do a two and three, well, a two and two and five. Most six, of them all are six, inch six, and seven probably eights. like your camper. It's the campers, yeah. yeah. But I learned that because yeah, standardize it gets your shit. So annoying having to have to unhook everything mm-hmm. and switch it, flip the ball around. Yeah. To switch them out, yeah. If you even have that option. I mean, sometimes mm. you I just have multiple or you, or you hitches gotta with pull the hitch out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now I've switched. So in the summertime, the only thing on the back of my truck is a two and five sixteen. Because the only thing I'm pulling is my sure. my camper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's and ready then, to hook up. Yeah, like right now, it's got a two inch because everything is two inch now. Mm-hmm. So moving forward, yeah, yeah, just snow machine trailers and all that. Yeah, switch yeah. it all out. Yep. yep. My side by side has a two inch hitch on it, but the rise is the thing on the hitch. Yeah, like some know. trailers are sh- like not as yeah, tall. You gotta get the right stinger that has a you know drop or mm-hmm. elevated. So Correct. basically, you gotta keep about three four hitches on you. No, you can really geek out. Yeah, no, unless no, you man. buy the the no, I the have like tri- five of them. The the um the buy, the, buy that yeah. one. The, the triple, triple that the, moves up and down. Yes, oh, the, the triple oh, yeah. dong. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it's at. You might as well for the price you paid for all the, the six all I got. Oh for sure. Yeah, don't. One and done. The problem with the the four wheeler trailers is almost all of them are inch and seven eighths. Right. Yes. Right. Like, and it, so then you got the one dude with the two inch, and you get in this bind where it's like, hey, I need you to haul this up the hill, true, and it's man. like, oh, well, we can't do it. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. That's true. I've we towed many, in many, 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 many for years and years on a one and seven eighths yeah. with a two inch, and I've never had a problem. Oh, I you've mean, had a two inch ball on a one and seven eighths forever. He had the coupler was a two inch. The ball was an inch and one seven eighths. Oh, so right. was, okay. yeah. so it was always sloppy. Which you yeah. you can do that as long as you don't have a bunch of weight in the back end of the trailer. Yeah, because that's what's going to keep the tongue up. off. Yeah, I've told you, I've had. A but lot yes, of no, you can do back. it. It's going to take a lot. Right, yeah, right. To disconnect that fucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's going to take yeah. a lot of weight. There weight's is or a one little bit of slop, but I kind of feel like on the. ATV when you have the thing that's why it wouldn't pop up as much it had a little give it would be like you know what I'm saying it wouldn't just be like so tight it's just gonna be like pow mm. you know yeah but you we, know. we had to rebuild one a few years ago that 
was it inch and seven eighths on an inch and seven eighths because it was popping off. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that trailer we had been using since I mean it's that white tub one you've seen it before, but I mean we've been using that since like 1990. Would and they so take it's a like beating. probably time? Yeah, they say those that, teeth that take a beating. a beating back there. Yeah, oh, then and those, so it's gonna happen. Yeah, the yeah. meat wagon yeah. gets fucking totally abused. Good. Right, you're just cruising yeah. and you look back and that thing's just bouncing. Yeah, away. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You're like where are these bumps coming from? Yeah. That tandem one does run smoother though. Oh, it's so. Oh, we have one things, of those too. Yeah, I, I would say though that we have put a whole moose in one of those and it snapped the. The hitch or snap the ball off the frame on a Yamaha Grizzly. Oh, really? Snap that shit clean off, dude. Damn. Mm. Fuck yeah. So while that tandem axle Bosky ATV wagon is a hoss and just a fucking load, it can <laughs> you know, you what you're towing is gonna ha- has to feel that load. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right, right. That's something to keep mm. in mind. But right. th- and it is it is badass. Yeah, yeah. There's a group of guys that moose hunt an area. Uh, that we hunted and and they had run through those boskies and broke them every which way you possibly could and figured out how to reinforce and weld the frames and beef up the fucking axles mm-hmm. and they were putting bigger tire one inch bigger tires yeah, on there yeah. and everybody's got two spares like they're messing around they've yep. they've put the boots to them but they're also running an area that is just gnarly 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 yeah Eureka stuff. The trail's not going to be too crazy abusive. It's what, when it gets like sopped in and stuck, and you're really torquing on it. I yep. think that's when it it's going to have potential to break. Yeah, I would say those Argos when we run those, they very rarely get stuck, and the only reason why they will get stuck is because the trailer behind it got yeah. also augered in. It just couldn't pull yeah, it so out, it so it really wasn't stuck. It there. was yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it was parting the river <laughs> of mud, right? Or or just <laughs> the the tandem axle would articulate and then catch grass ball right oh, yeah. like a grass ball and then it's just yeah. like a, i mean yeah. it ain't going nowhere yeah. just blow the belt on your machine if you want to hit it hard enough it's a displacement trailer yeah so but hey. no nah, man that's gonna be you're gonna love it you're gonna love it the, what did yeah. you did, what did your uh, I'm bring six, so much more shit did your six through there <laughs> <laughs> yeah welcome to my world bro <laughs> i was thinking about bringing that big ass table over there actually because i got a little four foot i was like is that gonna do it I'm going to take the six. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, take the big boy. Six there and the four. <laughs> have a fucking kitchen set up. Beer pong. <laughs> <laughs> did your six-wheeler come with a uh, hitch insert, or did you have to go buy one? Like the the female part to put it in? No, the male. No. Where did you get it at? Okay. That was a motherfucker because these guys like want you to buy theirs because the spacing the on diameter. the regular one. Right. Until you find that out. Yeah. Okay, so I think I got it at... Oh, you just got a... I think I got it at Lowe's, um, and it's the one that has this has like a. Some of them are square on the back. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like angled like that. Mm-hmm. And there was one that was shorter. I think I want to say I got it at Lowe's, mm-hmm. um, and that's where I found it. And you one. didn't have to drill your own holes. No, okay. no. I went everywhere. If it was either Lowe's or I think it was Napa by our house. Okay, might have had awesome. it too. Uh, I'll take another one of these. Yeah. Um, I think, but I went around. You can find it. Okay. You can find it, yeah. but it didn't have the ball on it. And you, you buy the ball separate. I bought because I needed a one seven eights yeah. or the other one. But you can find it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then did you have to buy a drop? Well, is yours a one and seven eights? My trailer is. You do? Maybe yeah. I'll just give you my whole setup, and Will I'll find and there? I'll find it. Yeah, it fits in mine. Oh, okay. well, sweet. Yeah, because I need how a two, big is your I need receiver? a two inch now. You need a two inch ball. I mean, I have one. But how big is your receiver? To, 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 and I have the tool to take it off. But if you're going to get one, yeah, I'll give you mine. Okay. Do you have a two-inch receiver? Yes. You mean the, the part? Yeah, the square. Yes, it's a regular size, like car size. That's right. You got a can mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. But the problem with that is the depth between where it inserts in the hole, they offset it on the can Take my, it's I have a, a two-inch. That's for Can Am? Yeah, because the Can Am is two inch. I use it on my side by side. Yeah. You have a Can Am? But yeah, the side by side. But the four wheeler, th- that shit doesn't fit. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's got like a narrow little dinky yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah. Like, hitch. Yep. It's like a one, one right? inch or something. Yeah. yeah. Shit's whack. One and a half. 
Yeah. It still pulls like a beast, though. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Enough power to pull that fucking ATV. I mean, I honestly yeah. was going to pull it with the one and seven eighths. I wasn't even going to change it. Yeah, I got a two. If you're loading it like the mayor said, man, it won't really be a problem. I just disagree with the slop, and you can always adjust the nut pressure yeah, so on your clamp right. yeah. on an ATV meat wagon combo so it does release in the event it tips over, you know, so you don't like tear anything or bend anything. You do mm-hmm. want it to release. Yeah. But I, I'm just, I just the whole to, standard is But my thought like process is the same, a hill and you're is the same as Jack's. Because yeah. I've been in situations where it's like, oh, I have to tow this guy's yeah. whatever. And it's a one and seven eighths. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of those are one and seven eighths. I yeah. mean, now they're, all the spendier ones are two inch. But if you got some homemade or like the rubber made yeah. one, a lot of them aren't. Yeah. It's all it's, the old school stuff is one and seven eighths, I think. It's really important to you communicate with the guys that you're going with on that stuff. As you prepare, like, who's taking what and towing what? Like, hey, what are you running so we can standardize everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Something to, you know, consider when you're you're doing those preparations. I mean, I would like to go all two inches. Now I have nothing. That's one and seven eighths. And if you want to take mine, feel free. It'll slide right into mine? Yeah, if you want to take the wagon. It's already set up? If you want to take the whole. Oh, I need to test this bad boy out. Okay. Well, if you're anyone but in next group, time. like if you need more, damn, okay. you could do. You could it's do just the, sitting in the backyard. You could I'm do not the, the single axle behind the the six fifty, and then that double hauler behind your six by six, and y'all could take the kitchen sink. Oh man, that's into a fact. that motherfucker. We'll dude. bring everything. Load this table up right here. <laughs> <laughs> just having a pod. Bring yeah, because that, that that six by six. It'll oh, it'll a beast. Oh, yeah. it'll drag. Yeah, it. that's built yeah. for towing that because I bastard. I pull mine with a one thousand mm-hmm. and. Yeah, that's what I got. It just no. Nope. You forget you even got it back there. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you don't even feel it. You don't even feel. I just it. hear yeah. noise and then. And I, I got back the like, back oh, stack shit. like four feet tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta see your stacking plan. Yeah, yeah I started. Some, I already yeah. got stuff in there, and I'm like figuring it out. Yeah, but I've been so used to not putting much in the trailer. Now I'm like, oh, okay, well I don't need Load to stack this thing. F- f- you know. Four feet tall. I could put yeah. some stuff in there. Yeah, that's how yeah. it was. But now I could fill the whole trailer. And if I need more space, you put it on the lid. Yeah. And then it's got all the tie downs to strap it all down. Yeah, that lid is nice with the yeah. like, uh, little bars around the side. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's yep. Like a hydraulic too. It's got shocks on the shocks. inside. Yeah, you lift yeah, it. And hydraulic, but. Mm-hmm. Does it yeah. come smashing down on your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. Yeah. That is real mine, nice. Mine does the opposite. They're killer machines. Yeah. I mean, or pieces of equipment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, that double one is dope. Yeah, though you're gonna pay for it, but oh yeah, you, know, you that's, are. That's the hot boy. Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, I've seen jokers on marketplace selling them for tw- two grand, twenty two hundred, eighteen hundred. Yeah, which one? The tandem. The tandem. Do they sell the single one for that? They hold yeah, their value. They true. They yeah. they are holding. I've seen the doubles for yeah, brand new. What are they like? Three, uh, three something, three at least. Three thirty-five to four. Okay, thirty-eight. Depending on where you're getting them at, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. those are expensive. What's the pack rat? But that's made out of a different material. It's yeah. a lot lighter. It's like a mold. Yeah, uh, it's like a fiberglass, right? Yeah, I think that's those a are, fiberglass those, resin. Those really hold their value too. They do. I have an old school tandem that I'm sure I could probably get two grand. And if I remember to correctly, the pack rat. Is a lot more shallow. It, if I'm thinking of the it right, is, it is a little bit. It's not as deep. It's as not the, as, as deep. The wagon, no. Right, right. <clears throat> where where the pack? Because we got rid of a Bosky tandem for uh, a super a f- super fat rat, which is a pack rat but the double. Okay. And uh, you guys have seen the videos of it behind the, mm-hmm. the Argo with the tracks on it and shit. It's massive. I mean, that's like basically two meat wagons in one. You want to talk about hauling some shit? You can put a lot of shit in that damn uh, wagon. But that double double hauler, excuse me, the ATV wagon, those sharp corners on the on the edges, the nineties, uh-huh. where the face comes down to the floor and the side, uh-huh. that would where we were going in the swamps w- was okay. digging in and digging in and digging into that wet mm. grass the other balls. Rounded. The other one's rounded and curved, so it's a lot more. You know, right, right. Mm-hmm. Less resistant and just mm-hmm. flowing over it. So that's where we compromised a little bit of the space for functionality. And that poor, that man, that thing was just an, basically it was a boat anchor. Like it fucking tore machines up, dragging that thing around through the muck. 
Right, right. So, mm. but again, that's not the right meat wagon for that type of hunt. Yeah. Yeah. It's a perfect meat wagon for an 80 mile one way ride in to the back well, that, country that, on a nice trail. Yeah, you know? that brings up a whole nother point is you, when you go shop for your wagon, you got to get the right one for what you're what actually you're going doing. To do. Yeah. 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 I, I think I'd prefer the aluminum in the, in the case of a hunt like this because of the fact that um, maybe you're running over a lot more rocks and boulders and things that with that thing's really loaded down and that thing happens to like crunch into a, a, a pointed rock on the trail in some weird angle as it's articulating up the hill. I'd rather it be like gashing into a piece of aluminum versus like punching a hole in the fucking mm-hmm. like yeah because that molded, yeah that aluminum molded, will take it and that fiberglass forget is what that bust. chem yeah. that chem stuff that the the wagons made out of right there. right but. Have you even um, taken that thing out yet? Mm-mm. Jack, I totally forgot yeah, until it, just now that you got a brand new 1,000 can M. Earl, Earl, it's up at Earl's and Earl's ready. <laughs> for me that, okay. and then I'm bringing uh, Peyton and I have daddy daughter night tomorrow and we're going up there to ride around at Earl's. Cool. So yeah, no. It's getting not, it broke in for you though. I've What'd dri- you get? I've driven it like 20, you got the same 20 machine feet. Oh, the six by six? No. Uh-huh. Yeah, like 20 feet. What's that one called again? So Can Am Outlander XT one thousand six by six. It's the Outlander. Yeah. It's an Outlander model, but the six by six. Yeah. Because the Outlander is also like the six fifty and the one thousand and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Which is your your original machine's an Outlander, right? Six fifty. Yeah. Six fifty. Right. Yeah. All these money bags out yeah. here. Well, you know, you yeah. gotta you gotta get the gears and the equipment. I think going. yeah, but that Can Am side by side, dude. That yellow one has like two thousand miles, dude. <laughs> Yeah, four thousand miles. It's an like insane amount of yeah. miles on the yellow one, dude. Uh, yeah, that uh, thing is still going. Super I was go- I was gonna try to go out with Daniel last weekend, and because you were bringing your machine out, but uh, yeah, my mom my mom watched the kids all summer, and mm-hmm. she was flying out set f- Friday night late, and I just couldn't leave her, so I stayed in town on Friday to bring her to the airport. Hey, dude. Yeah. So the real ride's gonna be the hunt. Well, we're going to get 30 miles on it between me and Earl up yeah. at his house, and then but the first one will be going in. Like a real ride. Yeah. 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 That's a... Yeah. yeah. It's pretty gnarly. It's going to be no problem. Yeah, dude. dude. I'm super you stoked that, to dude. have that. It's going to be money. Yeah. It's just a totally different experience. Yeah. I mean, I went like 20 years without rolling, and then I rolled a bunch of times the last year and a half, so last two years. Some of those hills are gnarly, man. Yeah. Yeah, and they're getting dug out real bad by mm-hmm. the like the really mm-hmm. heavy rigs. So now it's like you're coming up and you hit some roots, and like my on my, I mean, I have a 500 Honda Foreman Rubicon. I mean, that thing's a monster, and I drive up it, and you know the front tires can't even reach in, reach up really by the time the back ones get up to that little groove and then you kind of like chance it every time mm-hmm. gunning it and it's like straight up and down and you're like fuck and you make it and, uh, and you put that huge box in the back oh yeah yeah I do. which is yeah. nice yeah, yeah that's a, that's a pet peeve of mine and it's nothing against like everybody wants to go out and have fun yeah you know, but mm-hmm. Some of these guys and their their Yodas and their Jeeps. Are oh, out it's there, fucked up, know, man. Just, so we go over like, two mountain passes. They're doing that shit, up. and then oh yeah, we spend we devote <clears throat> one full day, one full day all day. We put about eight to ten hours, eight hours in to like cutting down trees and fixing the fucking trail, right? And it's like no one else is doing that shit. And it's like if you're riding these machines that are tearing it up, then you should be helping us, ref- you know, fix the trail system, but. Yeah, like anyway. Esca Falls. Oh, dude. Used to be like a spot that anybody can go. Oh, yeah. Take your machine out. And yeah. now you just see if you either ride up there or you see that they post the videos online. Like they're out there in these just monstrosities of Jeeps. Yeah. Yeah. And they get in these areas and they just hammer it to see how yeah. much mud they can fling up into the air and you're like dude you're just making monster ruts yeah and then you want to go out when it's muddy yeah do like the rest of us kind of wait for it to dry up and chill 
Yeah. I'm not trying to wash this joker. No. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really tearing it all up. Yeah. And then it's putting a lot up. So you're anti four by four. No, not at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not at all. Keep but it, you know, we're sponsored by a total truck, right? Raff and yes. <laughs> there's, there's a difference between responsible. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. But I also feel like some of those spots are just known like Jeep Jeep and big truck spots. You know what I mean? Like right. I ain't gonna go right. in that mud hole. Keep that out at there es- at Jim at Creek. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Well, I feel like Sutton too is that is that. Yes. That's yeah. that's now like a Jeep spot. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you look if you even if you fly over certain areas, you can see from the sky where there's a huge difference between four wheeler side by side traffic trails. And then you're like, yo, these guys are here with these big ass trucks. Yeah. Well, it's only going to get worse. 100%. Because yeah. more and more people are wanting Overlander stuff and big mm-hmm. stuff. And, and I'm cool yeah. with that. It's just, yeah. Not all of us are out there in trucks, so remember, you know, yeah. digging these holes. I mean, know. even even the side by sides, the side by sides did it to our area. Like a truck can't get into where we're going. The There's side no by some of way. those guys will come out and. Just so you know, it's not all truck people because yeah. some of these dudes feel like they got to put five inch lifts and these big mud tires that they yeah. got down the lower forty eight in the swamps that come up here, and they can't just drive through. They just yeah. got to hammer that yeah. Joker and yeah. Yeah. see how big of a rooster Fling tail out, they yeah. get. Yeah. They got the Pen Baja it. tires Pen on, Pen yeah, it. yeah, the sand tires. <laughs> yeah. Pen it. The big thing is though, like if you think about it, like this is all public lands. It's not managed by anyone, and we're all using it. So the only way that we're going to be able to continue to keep it in good shape and that our kids can go use it is that when we go use it, we also take time to fucking fix it. Yeah. And and that's the thing that like I feel like we've done a really good job every year I've ever been there. We spend the the whole day to do it, and everyone else should adopt that. You know, they should spend some not a whole day just go spend some time find the worst spots on the hill spots spots that you got washouts coming down that you know that if you don't get some trees and some brush into there that the gravel will catch it'll get washed out worse and it's like spend that extra hour to four hours or whatever and do what's right you know so then everyone can use these facilities or this the this what awesome like path through the wilderness in the future yeah. right Oh. And that's what I try to get people to understand is it's public land. We can all use it. Yeah. But the easiest way for it to not become public land in the state Fuck say we're taking it or BLM to come in and say you're not using this land anymore that's is right. to keep tearing it up. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to say you can't take care of this. So it's yeah. ours now. And yeah. now you won't. But now, but there is a lot of um, like they did a thing at, over there, yeah. like a cleanup. There's a lot of cleanups that are happening on and no, hundred percent, hundred percent. There are so there are there are groups out there that are doing that. There are, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm yeah. not here to bash anybody. No, no, no. We no, all like no, to go no. out and ride and have a good time. No, no, no. No, I mean the trail systems have all changed in Alaska from right. the 80s and 90s, 2000s when we grew up, where everybody ran four wheelers or side by sides and jeeps and big trucks. Well, it was all four wheelers or three wheelers. And, and it seems yeah. like too it, rapidly the trails are developing where you know those big truck. You know, sections are over there. The four wheelers and ATVs are now going around it over here. And well, I think uh, that the transition, and I'd be actually curious to know mm-hmm. um, the ratio of what it is side by sides to ATVs. I mean, there's you see way more side by sides oh, now. Oh, totally. You know, so I, what is I like think, seventy thirty. I think yeah, 60, side 40? by sides are kind of taking over. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think yeah, ATVs are. are more of a. I don't even know what you want to call it. A work horse type thing now mm-hmm. um whereas if you want to go out and have a good time you're going to get a side by side or ride a little more comfortably or you know yeah, yeah because, more comfortable because i yeah, i have both uh, yeah, totally i have both and now i'm at kind of at the point now where i'm like dude i just i have this massive four-wheeler got no business having it which four wheeler do you have? A Sportsman One Thousand. Oh, yeah. Don't need it. Yeah. No four wheeler should have that much fucking power. It's just stupid. Yeah. But it's like I just leave the plow on this Joker. Yeah. I take the side by side. Some snow, yeah. Take the side by side, and I can sit down, relax, yeah. cruise. My thumbs aren't burning from trying to 
Yeah, I get control the throttle that th- throttle. It's yeah. definitely more work to ride the four wheeler. It's definitely more comfortable to ride the side by side. Yeah, right for sure. But I, it's a different feeling. The four wheeler is a lot. Oh. Got ghosts. The four wheeler is a lot more nimble, so it can get to areas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That the side by sides can't get into, and especially depending on what trail system you're on, they regulate the size. Mm, true. Yeah. So unless you have a smaller side by side, like I got a trail side by side. Yeah. So I can go down. You know, the fifty inch. You can go regulated to narrow, narrow spots. Oh yeah. 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 Same with mine. That's how mine. Throw up. up the deuces, everyone else. Like, see <laughs> guys. well, you get less saddle sore and tired. Cause you know you're riding a machine, you're 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 straddled on it, you're riding it, you're gonna find that your six by six is probably gonna be super smooth because it's such a big platform to sit on, versus maybe the Honda was like a little bit mm. narrower. But I had a great experience this summer. I got to ride our family side by side into camp, set up, and then the next day the wife drove the side by side with the kids, and I got to ride my Grizzly around, uh-huh. threw a helmet on, super light, no gear on it. I wasn't carrying any tools, and I was just shredding. More it was fun, so right? fun, dude. I was yeah. oh, I loved it. And then the next day, we packed up, went home, and I was just like, doop 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 doop, in the side by side, out of there, listening right. to music. Yeah, no wind in my face. I mean, it'd be probably like <laughs> you, you know? think about like your boat and a cold jet shot in the cup yeah. holder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I just I've ridden in my dad's side by side for years, and it is so uncomfortable. Like I just th- I, I can't believe he still sits in that thing. That, that's probably and th- that's kind of an original old school piece of equipment. Is that old Rhino? Yeah, yeah, they've come a long way. Oh, Let's just man. say that independent suspension. Yeah, carbureted. You can I'm adjust sure the shocks. Probably the old six sixty. Oh, man, the heat mm. six sixty one longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it boils heat the gas. AC. <laughs> man, it's it's brutal. Like I don't I don't like riding in it. He's like, yo, give me a ride up there. I'm like, I'm good. I'll just walk in some mile. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't like riding it at all. Just holding on to the bar. <laughs> totally, dude. You just and I'm like, how do you, how are you like almost seventy and you're riding in this, you know? Yeah. Just just like, go get a go get one of those Hondas. I got the drive see. train is mounted to the frame. There's no spring, no nah, shock. Just shit. Straight metal. Good, good, yeah. good, 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 I got to see John today. Oh yeah? Yeah. I would random I, I stopped by the uh, Cider, I finally returned those cakes. Oh, no way, dude. dude Three today, years later, dude, give me I some didn't love. Even know he had them. <laughs> I I've been, been pushing like tracking, this guy, dude. tracking down kegs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you hit him up about it? No, no, no I, I didn't even him. know. Well, he called me, and I happened to be home. I'm like, dude, these kegs, and so I stopped by the cider. Yeah. And uh, did you return Moose's tooth? I did. Yeah, <laughs> to Brown Jug, and then. Did they give you a deposit Did you have to back? pay? No, fuck. Uh, no, they gave you no deposit. It was like back. a year and a half. <laughs> two, years, long. Dude, two years. They were like, no deposit anymore. <laughs> two years. Not quite two. It's yeah, a year it was from the house. Well, it was from meat party to meat parties a year, and then there's a half. Uh, another okay. half a year. Okay. <laughs> Like we, Honestly, we, you know what I did? changed systems. You're not even in here. I w- there were two empty <laughs> pony kegs, so they weren't, like, super heavy at all. I just walked right in there and went right to the back where the little rubber curtain is and stuck in there and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't even I was like, There was, like, no staff to, like, hey, man, I'm dropping these off. It was just one cashier, so I was like, all right, man, I'm just going to return them and walk on out of here. So I'm sure they figured it out. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's okay. probably, man, probably a $45 deposit. Well, we would have been in. We would have probably gotten that if we were returning it in a couple of weeks or whatever after the, the party, because there was also taps involved. But man, what else? Yeah, dude? Yeah. Did it's you leave good. the taps too? I did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be stoked to get the fresh start. Out. Fresh start. Yeah, we've all done it. I used to. Is keep there a way to track it? They're like going to look up a number or something. You can buy a thing, um, but they when they see it, are they going to be like, "Oh, this is number seven nine nine"? No, they just put theirs. it in the back. Okay. No, they they w- yeah, they'll just put it in the back and then can all. Is there like a serial number or something on the side that'll? Okay, yeah, oh. you can buy a UPC system for that. It's super expensive, and the brewery would buy it. You know, okay. so no it's one like a uses broken that tooth, shit. and then um, I don't know. I think we did like Alaska. Uh, free ride or something like that in one of them yeah no they'll just yeah, send them in the back and can all and we'll come pick them up so we're okay. so the only way specialty to, imports or whoever's doing mm-hmm. the only way to know it's to, yours is by the stickers you put yeah on that's it. right and mm-hmm. and you can have it embossed so mm-hmm. you know you know, mm-hmm. you know Sounds so official. it's in metal yeah on the side so that's gotcha. what we do yeah yeah and then we put our wrap on and then we i mean all the time we still get other ones you know like last week at Two Town Cidery. 
from Portland. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Mm. Come, come pick this up. We don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get into the gear. We'll be right back and get uh, get the gear talks going. Barney's Sports Chalet, supplying hunters and outdoor enthusiasts with the highest quality gear and equipment since they opened their doors in 1963. Barney's carries exclusive brands such as Alpaca Rafts, Sitka Sims, XO Mountain Gear, Hilleberg, and much more. Barney's prides themselves with keeping a huge stock on hand of various top-of-the-line tents, footwear, sleeping bags, optics, cross-country skis, just to name a few. Barney's is also the exclusive retailer of Montana Knives, Seek Outside, Kafaru, Stone Glacier, and their in-house brand, Frontier Gear of Alaska. Barney's has a superior selection of top-rated boots, sleeping bags, dry bags, mountaineering gear, electronics, and accessories. Need freeze-dried food or mountain snacks? They got that too. Barney's now has an amazing new paperback catalog available for in-store pickup or online order. Visit them today at barneysports.com, or even better, stop by the store in Anchorage at 906 West Northern Lights. If you want the best, there's only one name in the game, Barney's Sports Chalet. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaska public lands, waters, and wildlife. From national level policy work to engagement with boots on the ground projects from Kotzebue to Ketchikan. BHA performs public land cleanups, hunting and fishing clinics, and community education to help take your game to the next level. BHA's community-minded goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping wild lands wild and fostering the next generation of sportsmen and women for years to come. Make sure to follow BHA Alaska for upcoming events, local brewery pint nights, and more. Stand up for Alaska public lands and waters by supporting the Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Join us today at backcountryhunters.org. The Treehouse AK, your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. When you pull up to the Treehouse, you'll notice the beautifully hand-drawn art by Alaska's own Ted Kim. Once you get inside, you're going to see many of the same people that have been there since they opened. The bud tenders know you and what you like and what new product you should be checking out. The store is super clean and the music's always on point. The Treehouse and local owner Josh Boots is a staple in the cannabis culture through his music, community givebacks, and a lifetime desire to bring the people of Alaska the best products available. The Treehouse always has at least 25 strains available, and they're all shown prominently deli style in clear, openable jars so you can see and smell your options. Other products include edibles, concentrates, vape carts, pre-rolls, flour, dab rigs, and anything else you need, they got it. They also have some pretty sick merchandise for sale. Check out the treehouseak.com, or better yet, stop by the Treehouse today and get started on their loyalty program. Remember, you must be 21 years of age to enter their store, the Treehouse, where the culture lives. Did you guys just start? Um, did they just start buying some from you guys or something like that? Um, we don't distribute the pineapple on draft. It's really expensive to make with fresh pineapple. Would have been the- so toasted coconut pineapple I'm one? not on tap so we so we oh, um, maybe then i know we kind of made a deal with the 907 folks um they're awesome so we um, made them pineapple for the summer ah. so they're the only um draft pineapple outside of our our spot that got it and the fair the fair gets pineapple every year and okay. those are the only people that get the pineapple. the fair fucked up why are they close tuesday wednesday the only what? sunny days of the week. Like, we were supposed to go <laughs> yesterday. Why is the fair closed on weekdays? This is the first I've heard of it. Has this because they extend, uh, well, my wife thinks because they extended a week. It's longer. Oh, well, it's so three so weeks? Three week, it's three weeks. So weekends. they took two days away. But now it's like the best days to go pass, and it's about to be raining for the next right, however long. Right, 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 right. So, the, That's a so when you're running well, a it booth. It sucks for the people. I mean, sorry to interrupt, oh, but fine. like the people that are running a booth. Like, you're set up to be there this whole yeah. time, and then you have, like, days off? Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go hiking today. <laughs> yeah, it's like a four and two, a four and two, and a four and two for the three weeks. Maybe they like it. I don't know. I guess, I'm well, my, sure they made a change because people were saying yeah. stuff about it. My aunt and uncle are, are saying that they really like, they have a honey booth. Um, just check out their Hawaii honey. It's amazing. Um, they, uh, Is there honey from Hawaii? From Kona. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and they're doing it here in Alaska, too. Uh-huh. Um, really good stuff. I, in fact, you guys make it to the fair. I'll uh, direct you to them. They got some really great products. We're going tomorrow. Um, I think it's it's 
kind of nice for folks to you know put in four hard days and then regroup. Yeah, oh yeah. Restock and just kind of like, yeah, you know, I know, but your, I, I don't know. Your shifts out. I, I think a they lot of planning. To maximize, it's a lot of prepping, and you're dealing with. I mean, some people are dealing with stuff that's in freezers and coolers and. Mm-hmm you know, in their trailer, whatever. And it's like to have two days off on like a grind. I, I don't know. I guess they it wanted out. it, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. Cause I'm sure most people take off from the regular work Yeah, for two weeks to go run their, their business or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't it, know. It seems like the third weekend's good. Yeah. We'll add more, more meat. Like maybe they're trying it out. I don't know. I tried well, to get in the fair years ago. Well, I've been, I've been, I went to the fair on Friday when it opened last Friday. We did a date night, Rena and I, and met with Eric, Taryn, my brother, and Marissa, and uh, it was super chill. It was like a soft opening to the fair. It was actually kind of weird. I thought it was gonna be a lot busier. Mm-hmm. It was super chill. It was very quiet. Um, all the vendors were staffed up, just ready, ready to go. Come get a duck. Come get a burger. You know, I mean, it was yeah, just yeah. just pumped in the energy. Not burnt was, out. The energy was awesome just seeing all the people super excited, all their stuff super stocked up, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they were ready for an onslaught, and it was just kind of chill, but I was able to, I guess without the distraction of my children there, I I could actually, like, look around and Mm, go into places. the fair a little bit more. Like, I got a bunch of beautiful art pieces. In fact, I don't know why the hell I didn't bring them for the studio um, I shared with you guys. Uh it looked like it was really healthy and strong. Like it looked, I remember after COVID, there was a couple of booths and stuff that were kind of shut down. And there mm-hmm. was just like, I don't know, it was a little more still busy in the fair, but it, it is just, I mean, all the vendors and bringing campers and equipment and uh, Alaska mining and diving um, AME, they brought out a massive display of all mm-hmm. their stuff and have mm-hmm. all their staff there. Like Did people you see really, any people, uh, man, I, so we mainly just went in, ate, drank some beers, went and kind of were looking for certain things oh, and yeah. like the art. And sure. so the next trip, so this Friday I'm taking the kids, and I'm, I'm gonna go do and check out all the dad stuff. Go mm-hmm. full Spider Man face. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> get the hair. You guys all get the hair going you and get the, beard. the beard. Yeah. I never done all that stuff. Get the full, I try to full avoid, rainbow beard. I'll be on. I try to avoid the fair. Like after a season of hot dogging, dude, I ain't yeah. trying to be like. Oh yeah, around at the all, fair, those, dude. all the people. Yeah. yeah, but my wife and the kids, I, I'll go yeah. for the rides and go spend five hundred dollars. It's yeah. fun, man. Yeah, it is. But I'm on a diet, and now we're gonna go eat. Oh, just do it in your fasting, brutal. dude. Just only eat your fasting window. Yeah, I'm adjust your fasting yeah. window. Stop at nine. Done. Yeah. Eight yeah. o'clock. I'll be whatever done your cutoff nine, is. Dude. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'll be done by cheese curds, six thirty. Corn dog. Yes. Waffle f- pretzel with cheese. I, yeah, uh, you got your items. Elf here or whatever. Yeah, spinach bread from pork Talkeetna. chop on a stick. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, tell me you guys what get is the, that? the pork chop on a stick Ooh, with the cheese curd, same spot. Mankind. That's the first that's stop. Dude. Pork chop on that's, that cheese that. bread. The Talkeetna cheese bread is good. yeah. Alexa gets notch. that. Yeah, what's crazy is it, it's spinach like spinach at the fair at Salmon Fest. Like the line is like a minute, maybe two minutes. You go to Forest Fair and get that. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> two hours. Mm. I'm like, why are why are people waiting in line at the Forest Fair for the Talkeet number for two hours, but the other places it's like two minutes. Yeah, it's well, crazy. Yeah, mm. it's nuts, dude. Yeah, yeah that is well, weird. I mean, it's good for all the vendors, and I've done the rigmarole of all these yeah. events. It's really cool that people can have these side businesses. Yeah, so where do you get salsa this? stuff? You where know? do you get this <laughs> oh, uh, pork chop on a stick at? So right when. Well, typically, it was, like, one of the first ones when you walk in from, like... like where the, MAs used to be on the left? Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. Cool. And they sell the bomb cheese curds, so you get yeah. the two-for-one right, one right mm-hmm. there. Yep. Right, right, right. Man. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I advise yeah, I'm gonna to go not get the bucket of cheese curds. Whoa. There's a bucket. That is a lot. I, I advise to I get might, because all my kids and my oh, wife no. like it, yeah. so I might... What if everyone likes it? It's too much still? I feel like if you get the... the, the uh, stick the pork chop on the stick, and then you'll share the curds. It's like a nice stop. Like everybody have their thing, share the curds. If you bite, you're good. Move on. You save yourself. Yeah, oh, that man's got self control. I ain't got that. Well, cheese just fucking plugs me up. Oh, bro. I love it, man. I want to go. I love it. cheese. Don't get me wrong. I just you know. Ah, I love cheese. Curds. Ain't no, ain't me steel up. machine, man. Actually, it just you know falls what? right on through. <laughs> Shout out to um, whoever the girls were oh, at geez. the. Um, 
not this year, but last year we went to the King Salmon Derby in Homer. Mm-hmm. They are like oh, actual Wisconsin, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Those Wisconsin were good. heads, dude. That was the Those were shit, good. Dude. Yeah, oh my god, uh, and we so waxy, them, man. Oh. Oh, Wait, so which one? Wait, at the end, Homer. They're like Homer I don't know what folks. their name was, but yeah. they're oh, like they're, straight okay, from Wisconsin. Okay. I thought you were talking about something else. No, 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 no. Another so, tent. So Saturday night, <laughs> I got some squeaky cheese in the fridge. <laughs> Uh, I'm Three going packs. to uh, the fair for Nate Bergazzi. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got invited oh, to go to that. He's but awesome. He's great. A comedian. It's yeah, in, he's great. I was super surprised they got him. Like he could sell out big stadiums, man. Well, they be getting some weird dude, like Kendrick Lamar. Oh, <laughs> like last year or the whatever. They got yeah, some big acts. There's some about the draw, I guess, man. Because well, every like I think a lot of those like artists is like I've never been to Alaska. This is my time yeah. to go make yeah. some money and go see stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know. Which is cool. Yeah. I mean, the promoters must be making it work if they're able to get these acts up here. Oh, totally. So, totally. We're, we're, we got a booth next year. Oh, oh what? at the fair? AWP. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> we should get an intern and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll get back listen, to all the kids listen, out there. Listen to all the episodes so you know I know all the facts and then uh, <laughs> sell some merch. <laughs> Dude, why you bullshit? We'll talk on the side while you're bullshit. All right, let's get into yeah, the gear. I mean, let's get into the that. gear. Um, Jack, why don't we start with the um, the sleeping bag? All right. I'll pull it up real quick. Um, you recent or a year ago purchased yeah, so, the... Yeah, so it's the Slick. The Kafaro Slick oh, bag slick. that you can buy at Barney's. Um, yeah. They yeah, keep them in yeah. stock. I did it, buy mine at Barney's, and it's a good place to go to get it. It's a half zip. So that's mm. my dad. That that's kind of like the issue. Like me and Kevin were talking about it for a little bit there, and I was like, "Man, my feet get fucking hot." But the the sleeping bag just it's not lamellite, but it's like their their proprietary blend of that synthetic material. And then you see how all these like cuffs mm-hmm. are mm. um, like around your face and your neck. They're, they're your around body. your face, your neck, and then the whole yeah, it sleeve seals it all up. Right, has both of those things. So I mean, it really like the zipper part is really warm still. Um, but like I said, I got my feet my feet get hot so. The first when when it's um, a cold day, and um, like I'd say, if it's a fifty degree day and it gets cold at night, no problems for me. But if it is uh, if it's above sixty and it's above fifty at night, is I, it a zero degree? It's a twenty. Okay, then I, I just get out. Like, yeah. I get out of the bag. So um, I have tried to like pull my feet out at the hip. And then I have slept with like my feet, my all my legs out, oh. hip down, yeah. and, but that's super uncomfortable. So um, anyone, I mean, love this bag. It, I, I, I saw some Brandon earlier that I tried like the dry out your pants thing. It dried them out fast. Um, I mean, I was dried in like two hours. My pants, uh, I was wearing some Koyu, like the Koyu attack pants, I think. And they were pretty wet. And they're anyway, after two hours, they're dry. So I pulled them out. Um, but uh, what I would, how do you like the center zip though? I don't mind the center zip. What I don't like is not having the feet. Okay, the center zip the doesn't down. bother me at all because you can still roll to your side. In in the way that I put my, um, I think everyone here probably does this, but we get the inflatable pillows and then blow them up like one third of the way and then put them in the ho- the mummy hood. Mm. Um, then you can kind of turn. Like I can turn my body in the sleeping bag and the sleeping bag doesn't turn with me. Mm. And a lot of that has to do with that, he- with that, that, um, that pillow being in the, in the mummy head. But the fucking, the, the I'm, I'm done with this, like not being able to take your feet out. So I am having it altered. I'm um, the same way. Yeah. I got to have like air on my feet. Got it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I do. So, and I'm trying to think, I think how I'm going to alter it is I'm, I'm going to like six inches from the bottom, have someone who does like alterations for in town works out of, um, you can drop your gear off. We learned from, um, from one of our guests that we can drop stuff off at the marmot and then someone oh, okay, the hoarding okay. marmot. And that I think it was Eric, but any that told us, but anyway, uh, we can drop it off a hoarding marmot, 
they take it for like a couple weeks, make, you know, professional grade, like outdoor clothing and equipment modifications to it and then drop it back off at hoarding market. So I think six to eight inches from the bottom, I'm going to do a horizontal because I, I don't need it to drip and to zip all the mm. way down and I don't want to mess with the, with their zipper. But I, I like the Siemens bag so much that I would buy it again and do that modification on my own. Mm. Um, it, 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 this thing's legit. Like it's going to last a long time. Um, and then I, I have it in this compression yeah, sack throw here that on the table. It actually, I mean, when you bust that thing out, it's huge. Yeah. And for it to giant. pack down to that. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. What's that? It's probably eight inches by, you know, the link of a sleeping bag. I missed it. Was that a 15 bag? 20. This one's a 20, a 20. Yeah. Do they sell zero? Yeah, they do. They the do. slick comes in twenty or That's zero. A comfortable twenty. Have you? Have oh you, no, I've never. Did you been sleep in cold. anything that was cold? Cold, cold. I have, yeah, in it. Um, but I brought it to Yakutat this year too, oh, and yeah. it was cold every night. Um, yeah, I've never gotten cold in this bag. Um, mm. It's been zipped open every night that I've slept yep. in it. So I just did, you know, mm. sheep hunt in this bag, and a few of the nights were down into like the forties, you know, low forties, <laughs> but um, yeah. nothing too bad. Yeah, and you can order it from Kufaro directly, or you can go down to Wiggies. I, I mean, um, not Wiggies. Oh, sorry, um, Barney's. Barney's. I think they're the only ones that sell it in yeah. town. If you want to actually get in the bag, and I would highly, highly recommend that go to Barney's and get in the bag. That's what I did. Yeah, they have all the top quality bags yeah. that you want. They sell the Western Mountaineer and that we've talked about before. Yeah. I want to say and the Stone, the Stone Glacier, Glacier I got one that is one awesome. Too. Is down, mm-hmm. but that yeah. one is a synthetic. Yep. The other comparable one to that is the Wiggies one. That's that's really awesome too. But they unfortunately they don't have the store here anymore. Yeah. Um. So you have to order it. And I don't think it packs as small as this. No way. Yeah. No way. So, so and then this outside, the, it's like a rip stop thing that is proprietary than them is pretty legit. So that would be the other thing is like and and then it has like the DWR coding. So like if mm. it gets wet, it's not mm. a big deal on the outside either. So. Yep. Yep, I would buy. But the synthetic down people that are looking at this podcast for that kind of stuff. I mean, like you said, if you're in a wet situation, you're doing a river hunt, you're doing a super rainy area, um, you want to go with that synthetic so that you can go in, like you said, with your wet stuff. Yeah. And I've seen Brandon straight up go full, full, (laughs) full like boots, gators, everything after like a wet fest, and go straight into the bag. And yeah. just come out dry, which yeah. is amazing. That's the same thing yeah. with that slick bag. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. amazing. And that's kind of the point of it, right, is, you know, get back from a hard pack out and cold and wet, strip down and jump in that, zip it up and yeah, regenerate heat. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. a big guy. Yeah. What are you, six one? Yeah. yeah. You know, hefty. Yeah, yeah. Hefty that's, kind of guy. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I got the long one. But, uh, yeah, it's legit. And it's pretty light. I think it was like two. Yeah, that's an like impressive size. Two point three pounds or something. Yeah. All right. Thanks for sharing. Um, that's, that yep. thing's badass. That's going to be my next bag too. Yeah. For I, sure. The feet getting hot thing is a huge issue, dude. Yeah. I, I have, have to be able feet, to put my so feet on. I'd be all right, up, man. Yeah. I'd be fine. But with I like that. your idea with the zipper. Yeah, I'm not bringing it mm-hmm. to Moose Camp. I'm bringing my uh, my other my big Agnes like Zero King or whatever up there because of the feet issue. But next year I'll. Once I have the mod, I'll bring that to Moose Camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's get into the other item you brought there, this bad boy. Okay. Yeah. So I was, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about like ner- these guys make fun of me a little bit, but um, that I do athletic greens, and I think like that, but that gut, but that gut biome is super important to, uh, you know, full body health. Um, so I, I I've been like one of these like iodine people forever with the uh, water tablets but it's like what you know that what do you what do you do when you're putting those water tablets in your body you're just fucking tearing up your butt your butt guy your gut well, your butt too. and uh and so <laughs> so yeah totally so i was i wanted to switch so i went to um the steri pen and um yeah, i'm pretty, pretty sure this is like the it's called the steri pen so i'm this is the only one I could find, and then so it's the only one I looked at reviews on, and then I know that Daniel and I had used one. So anyway, I got this thing and uh, tested it out on multiple backcountry trips this summer. I brought on Kasugi, and then um, we had two of these on our sheep hunt because we were going for 11 days, and 
they they advertise that you can ha- get 110 two liter you know one liter um you know fills and um purified but that's not true um so I, this gets like four days in is, is mm. basically what it is um so it wasn't 100 i added that wow. up um so you have to bring a charger and we brought two of these and luckily we brought two because um jake bumped the bottom snapped the glass and it snapped it and it wouldn't work oh no so luckily we brought two um but i was surprised about that so and it is glass yeah you know so i was like well why why don't they make that into i think it's glass anyway it broke and um and, and and it wouldn't work and then we tried to take it apart in the field and swap batteries from it unsuccessfully um but mine didn't break and uh and uh, so I think as long as you have the protective cover on it and stuff, yeah. but I think maybe like the really cold water coming straight from a snowpack, and then he hit like the side of the mm. the oh. water bottle broke it. Mm. So like trying to make sure that doesn't happen, and then knowing that hey man, if you're going out for more than four days, you're gonna need to get a charge on it. Well, we took ours on the ten day, yeah, we? but me and you had battery packs. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So and just, well, that is the plus on that is USB. Yeah, it is USB, yeah. so you can plug in. I mean, and yeah. everyone's bringing a USB charger to charge your phone, to yeah. charge your uh, in reach and yeah. stuff like that. Charge and that's why quick. that that one. When you go look at the stereo pins, there's def- a lot of different kinds. But if you're bringing a charger, I would as well recommend that USB one because yeah. you can ch- and it charges pretty quick. Yeah. And you're good to go for another four days, I guess. Yeah, and this is like the, what is that, the USB-B or whatever? Mm -hmm. The one that has that before the perfectly oval one or, you know, round one. This one still has like the short edge and the long edge. Yeah. Um, You know, so it's the same as all the in-reach chargers. So it's like one cable for that. Um, How long it it, 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 charged? It it wasn't a long time on the, I think it took like a quarter of my battery battery pack to charge this. Right. So it was like. About the charge of a cell phone, maybe? I think a little less. Yeah. Yeah. I think a little less than that, but it's yeah. not too cumbersome either. That was one of the things yeah. I thought about with just adding more shit to the pack and. Yeah. And I don't bring this piece like i just in the field i just bring oh this. okay you don't bring the so, sheath yeah this just seemed like a waste mm-hmm. oh, uh, really? oh, how okay. would you compare that i know it's two separate things but that compared to a life straw well uh, the life oh. straw the the life straw is interesting because uh one they they fuck up so i i have what one what life straw that just i'm drinking i've, I've ne- i didn't drink like the amount of volume that it can take in a life and it ju- just fucking stopped and i can't clear it oh really? and i looked on google how to do it i've tried <laughs> so there's that piece but the other thing is like the only time you can really drink out of the life straw is like straight out of the water so it's like every time you're taking a drink out of a water bottle you gotta stick that thing but like in there. my i have a life straw water bottle Oh, so the nozzle, it's in the nozzle. It's, it's built into the yeah. actual pretty, water bottle, right? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I guess if you want to do it that way. Um, Those are great, too. Yeah. I mean, I've never even, that's never even crossed my mind. The, the, the difference is, like Jack says. And that's what I was curious. That's not going to fail on you unless it breaks. Yeah. And that's going to kill everything for sure with that light, yeah. with that UV light that's going on in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I always bring, like, the Life Straw and Trips as, like, the ultra, ultra backup. I don't bring it, I shouldn't say always, because I don't bring out sheep hunting, but I'll bring out, like, moose hunting or, like, fishing and on a river. But, but the difference is, is depends on what you're going to do, because a lot of times when we go on a, on an extended raft trip, um, I'm not bringing that. I bring the Katadin. Yeah. That is the big, like, water bag looking thing that yeah. is similar yep, to that. Water so you in line. into a water jug. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And as long as it's self cleaning, and that's like what, like, his, like, Daniel's water filter, my water filter bags, and hopefully your, your one of the water ball, it has like a, a, the ability to back flush it and clean it out. Those life straws don't have that, like the ones you buy from the store or, right. you know, the one, the ones that you wear on your neck. So I don't know about the water bottle. I don't think you can back flush it. Um, but also, those are a lot cheaper. So, if budget is if look. a budget is a thing, you can't go wrong with those Sawyer. I'm assuming it's a Sawyer uh, <coughs> one. 
or whatever it's brand. Made, They're all pretty it's, legit. It's made by it's a Life Straw brand. Yeah. Um, is the water bottle it's, like it's, a plastic? It still rolls up small. No. Okay, it's, it's a like full a, water bottle. Uh, what do you call it? Like a Nalgene, Nalgene, Nalgene okay. bottle. It dips in it, but it's got a different top. Yeah, and it's got a Life Straw built into yeah. it. Yeah, got it. Well, here's yeah. the difference: is is like you're going with the group, two guys, three guys. You can do both people's water with that versus like your water. Oh, good. right, 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 you know right. Saying? So then, two I was guys curious as far as efficient, like um, quality or I. I personally uh, think that's safety, so un, to speak, unmatched. Because that's what you're going for. Is unmatched. I think that is. If you're worried water. about beaver stuff, beaver, right, right. You know what I mean? The, you're not filtering it out, though. So you're getting like all, if you're taking it from dirty water, it's, it, it's. You're going to get dirty water. Dirty with water that. with, with all the parasites <clears throat> and bacteria dead. You know what I mean? But most of the time we're drinking from clear water. Right. So it's not a big deal. And if you use like a filter, like our bags with dirty water, it's going to filter that out and we're going to have to clean the, you know, clean the filter because it's getting clogged up or like silt. Um, but so you're still, that, that's the, the, Daniel's right. Like, I think that this is probably the best answer. Well, iodine and then this, but this is better for gut, gut health and your body. Uh, for killing right. shit, but like a filter filter would be better if you're drinking like water with like turbidity or like, you know, that's dirty, physically dirty, you know, has like particulate or whatever in it. Yeah. That's the one. And it is made by Catadin. I didn't know that. Who makes it? Catadin. Oh, the makes same this, company makes, that has makes your their, bag. Yeah, they built, like, I didn't know that. Just okay. found that out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but super lightweight, super small. There's smaller ones. There's bigger ones. Um, so up to you on what you want. But I feel like I need to get one of those and try them out. I watched you and Darcy using those up on the Kasugi, and, you know, I was just chancing it. Yeah, yeah I'm not legit. a chancer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a chancer. I, I right. can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I had been good before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what's cool about, and to your point about, if you're using this pen, you're you're still going to be selective on the quality of water you're getting because yeah. you could fill it up with silty or muddy or murkish, murkish water or whatever and then sterilize it, but it's still going to taste nasty. Like yeah. You want to find the cleanest water source and right, then right. This, is the, this is the insurance policy. Yeah. Just making sure it's all good. Yeah, if you it's know? not clear moving water, I'm... Yeah. yeah, I don't care what well, it the is. Life, I'm not with the, with, it. Yeah. the with the life straw, you could probably do that though, right? You could probably put. Yeah, they advertise you can. Yeah, dirty water. You're not gonna catch I mean, me. It's still gonna taste like shit. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. my other question, and I I posed it to Jake out there, was like, because he didn't want to drink any silty water, mm. and I was like, well, that water is about the same as the Kenai right yeah. there you know because there's all these different streams and then there was like you know the copper river one there too you know of course i'm not gonna drink out that one and i was like well how much like silty water can you drink like i guess that would be like how many grams of silt could you intake per mm -hmm. day where like it doesn't have an adverse effect or is there a certain amount where like you're getting some extra minerals or it, like it's like you know the 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 birds like eating the 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 gravel to, for their gizzard and help like you know grind things up like is there a certain amount of like silt that would be good for your body like occasionally you know like it's like you're it's like you're fast you know or yeah, whatever get a good clean so i like posed it to him i was like <laughs> you know it's probably actually good you know and he was like yeah. fuck you jack i'm not drinking this but but like do you guys know i i would love to know that answer how much silt yeah like it how much can you it, is any silt bad how mm. bad or is there like a certain amount that would be like for a day okay for you like, yeah what what is the answer to that let us know hit us up yeah. in the comments. A tough one. <laughs> i can tell you that we went pretty hard on some really minerally water mm -hmm. up in the brooks mm -hmm. and it gave me very foul uh gas okay straight up yeah yeah it did was mm. it red water yeah. a lot of iron reddish mm. a lot of iron in there yeah, we were. Yeah. It was a sulfur. It was a sulfur nope. bag. Oh, oh damn! <laughs> a lot of sulfur. Man, these oh, guys were gosh. just like, hey. oh. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, guys. I'll sleep outside if you want me to." <laughs> um, and then I guess the last thing, Jack, which um, we've been a big proponent of, um, yeah, is for uh, mountain hunts or, or even like for emergencies. Even when I'm just going on, like even 
Kinnick or mm-hmm. wherever, Eska Falls, I always pack that teepee yeah. with me mm-hmm. because you never know mm-hmm. what happened. You break yep. down, you got shelter from oh, yeah. everything. For you know? a pound and a half. So and with the with the pole, it's a pound and a half. I used the pole um, the last. So I took it to Kasugi, and I also took it on our sheep hunt. Um, Jake was like a little hesitant, but I have the Black Diamond four person ultralight TP, and um, man, this thing is is pretty fucking legit. Like I at first I was like, well, I was pretty oh nice. I w- I was pretty unsure like how it would do so i was glad we got to go on the kasugi and get we had one night that was pretty windy and rainy and it just stood up but what's great about it is even you know it's a four person but you can get all your gear stacked on your side set out nicely like shit like kind of drying and then still be able to cook on your side you know if you split it in half on your side of this pole and um and and so with your sleeping bag and everything there so it's kind of like you have your own two-man tent on your side but you can like come in dirty you know so it's like i'm not having to leave shit outside i'm not having to like yeah the take rain your boots off take your boots off yeah the rain the rain um putting putting like you leaving your bag outside with just like the rain cover on you don't have to do any of that shit no. um and then like if you have to you know go to the bathroom it's like pretty easy like there's multiple ways to not leave your tent and go to the bathroom yeah. um, in, in the middle of the night, which I, and then the cooking in it, it like heats it up, you know? So it's like, everyone's like in their, you know, t-shirt and, and then you can adjust it for the wind. Like if, if, if you want a little bit more breeze through it, you can give it more breeze through it. Um, one thing that I haven't mastered is like getting it super low to the ground to stop bugs. Mm. Um, but we no, had doesn't we, really happen. We did camp in multiple areas, like one on the Kasugi and then one one of the nights on our, our sheep hunt where um I think this is the sheep hunt right here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There yeah, this there's me right there. Yep. So um that uh but there was like multiple types of flies, gnats and mosquitoes and I mean, some came in, but not as many as outside. It wasn't like they found like all of them knew the way in, um, and they really didn't bother us that much in there. So it, that part wasn't real bad. Um, they collect kind of on the top. Yeah, they collect on the top. Yep. So they're hanging out up there where all that like yep. carbon monoxide, all that yeah breath yeah. that you're putting out is collecting. Yeah. <clears throat> And then um, I know that like Daniel brings his own poles, but my hiking poles aren't um, the points just aren't good enough for the ground to be able to like do to do this. So, or do you do you do handles both directions, or do you do I don't point do down? Way. I bring the pole. Oh, you do. Oh, okay. You bring yeah. the pole. So yeah, I've only used the pole from the manufacturer, but in the instructions, it had it came with like two pieces to that will tie your poles together and um and i mean you your walking s- sticks yeah your walk your sticks. walking sticks and so it would save some weight that way um the one my one worry about using this thing was i've had really bad experiences with ground squirrels these guys all know about this ground squirrel that went into my tent she put it with my dad and uh my dad and i got ramps when he was 65 and he uh, left the tent open it was him and uh <laughs> this fucker did not bother any of his shit because he it was a three-man tent and he set up like one of those cop things mm. and it that cop thing is like two and a half man so i had like half a man of a tent <laughs> so it just came to my spot and it shit all over my sleeping bag ate my it ruined my like slumberjack i love this slumberjack 30 degree bag i had it since i was a kid i loved it and um and uh it ate the whole fucking thing ruined it it ate my socks it shit all, all over fucking all inside my sleeping bag all over so this the my one hesitation on the teepee was these stupid fucking ground squirrels and we were in a spot where there are some ground squirrels and so every day like i would even if even if we left the teepee up and we weren't moving camp or you know hunting out of it 
that day then i would bag everything up you know so like compression sacks for my food of course that should happen anyway but then um for my sleeping bag and the only two things i left out were my sleeping pad and then my coffee cup and this fucking ground squirrel shit <laughs> all over my sleeping pad and then fucking shit in the <laughs> lid of my cup that was off and then oh. somehow like my cup is big like it's taller than our um upper huffman coffee mugs it it shit in my coffee cup so, so it got it, up in there and hung its ass over the cup it must have or it wow. jumped in there and shit and just anyway. trying to visualize this <laughs> the fuck let you know so we had a like wow, kind of like up. up in my spot <laughs> we covered a lot of grounds we dr ground that day we dropped over into um a whole nother drainage and looked up some bowls over there so it was a long day when we got back and it was a mixed weather day it started rainy uh, i had some good pictures of me walking a ridge in the fog that I, I sent to you guys. Um, and then it got sunny. And then right before we got back to chaos camp, it was like, you know, mid, um, it was like a Rocky mountain, like thunderstorm, just like pouring. Mm. And it, and so it was only like five minutes, you know, right before we got back to camp. So as soon as we got back camp, I zipped it up through my, my, uh, stone glacier back backpack on my sleeping pad, hip belt down, and then, like, took care of everything we needed to take care of and then got in, in the tent and then no, realized all the shit is all over my sleeping pad. Oh, and it's dude. everywhere. It got all over my backpack. And Fuck. now I'm into, like, a 13-day rash all over my back from that ground fucking squirrel sh ground squirrel shit. And, <laughs> I mean, I flipped it over, but I think it must have got in on, like, my hip belt in the spot that I didn't see. Mm. Um, so that's the downside. Yeah, of like if you're gonna hunt out of the tp like ha in a place that critters can get in there um you really need to make sure your shit's tight and um like i would have rolled up the pad probably or like mm. done something maybe set it sideways the side, yeah. against the pole and then you know the coffee cup i was drying out so i would have just put the lid on it no yeah. but um everything else to the camp was clean you know so uh and then of course nothing happened to jake's side but yeah but for the weight Damn. for the size two, two for of it i mean what is it one point something? one and a half pounds with the pole yeah and it's yeah. like i mean it's legit like four person tent so for in terms of like the space the, this the sizing so like in this type of hunt it's like a perfect two-man tent perfect two um, yeah. and then uh, like um on the on the kasugi me and darcy would sleep on one side and then our backpacks are in the other side and our two dogs. Okay. So perfect. it was like mm -hmm. perfect for the two dogs and going, and we had plenty of room on that one side, just us. Oh, so perfect for the dogs. That was, that was the you put your wet, me. dirty dog in oh, the yeah. tent. Oh, you know? dude. And that wind's coming through, keeping that smell away. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. So, um, and, and so, yes, I would recommend this. Like, I'm not going sheep hunting in a tent. Yeah, I'm bring if someone's like, hey, I'm bringing my own sing one man. Do you want to bring one man? I'm just bringing this. Yeah. Hell yeah! So, one man yeah, in there, you just be like, a yeah. oh, I would luxury. love. I mean, this yeah. is how big it is. Yeah, if you, yeah, it's yeah. To, and that's it's without nice. it, and that's not in a compression sack. And this also has smaller. my footprint in it. Oh so, wow! Okay. So I have a special oh, material in there. And that's the other thing is like I brought a three man footprint, and I think that was perfect for me and Darcy because we had it on one side. But for like two, it was enough that your sleeping pad was on it and everything else was off. But I think that if I was going on a sheep hunt again, um, I would probably get like a four man footprint, a little bit bigger footprint for the ground. Yeah. Or two, yeah. two, two, one man, two, ones. two, or one something. man footprints and one for each person. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Thanks Legit. for sharing. I, I'm glad to hear it because you've hunted with Daniel, I think stayed in it and then you took Darcy out. I'm sure Jake had probably never stayed in TP. So, no, what yeah, did he, he? How did he feel about it? Um, he, I think he was really hesitant at first. Oh, yeah, that's what I expected. Uh, he was super worried about the bugs. The bugs weren't that bad. Um, I think I think that he would be cool with it again. Uh, he sure. didn't like that. That I think he would have preferred the footprint to be bigger at first because he like felt like his like backpack should be on something. Yeah, but you, your backpack doesn't need to be on something. Yeah. So yeah. I think like if he, you have a tent, you're not bringing the backpack inside. Right. So he got. Yeah. I think he got Put used to that. You're putting a vestibule at the end no, on the mm -hmm. ground. No, on the ground. Yeah. I think a lot of the super cub hunters though they are like one man tent people. So if you went with like three of them, 
then they would all have their own separate one man tents. And that's just not the mentality I grew up in. Like I grew up in like go as light as you can. The light as we can is that we fit in the smallest tent we can fit. Yeah, you share it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um I mean I'm open to that, but also this saves a lot of space if he doesn't have to bring one man and he can yeah. just sit in here. So Well and what's really cool about that too is it's a great spike opportunity. Oh totally. Yeah. Or, you know, like I was prepared to carry mine on our caribou hunt in case we decided mm -hmm. to get stupid and go way yeah. out after some caribou and then get them down and it's, you know, one o'clock in the morning. It's like, well, yeah. let's just throw this thing up and lay down for a little bit and then yeah. we can hike out in the morning or whatever. Right. It's just nice for a quick throw up. Yep. A hundred percent. You can, I mean, you can legit carry that in your day pack. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I would be happy to spike out. with You know, if thing. it was just piss and rain and you just wanted to throw it up just to get out of the rain and yep. make a cup of coffee, you know, it's just nice to just yeah. even carry with you for the day. It's not that cumbersome at all. No, not at all. And no. this also, the Black Diamond uh, Megalite is what it's called. Um, you can get it at Barney's as well. Mm. Um, and, nice I mean, for, for any kind of, like, wet hunt, like river hunt, and you're having to set this thing up every day and you got your waders on and you're wet, like... It's awesome because you can go in, you can go out. Yeah. And there's other companies that yeah, make them. The there's on. Seek Outside. There's the Kufaru. Yeah. There's other companies. I think Arctic Oven has kind of a, a TV oh, one. Okay. Um, but for the price, yeah. for the price and the materials the weight, yeah. and the weight, yeah. I mean, it's very great. I mean, oh, you can go incredible. crazy and get the Seek Outside. They're new. I forget what the material is called. And you're going to pay three <clears throat> times as much. Mm-hmm. As you will for the black right, diamond, right. same for yeah. the kafaro. I th I think that I think that if um, if I had a different one, it would wouldn't be for what the purpose of this is. This is for like backpacking mostly for me, um, and I will bring it on other missions, like you guys said, just for like a a safety issue. But like if I was like doing rivers and stuff, I I would want one with a stove. Well, let me get so that's when we bring. My brother has the kafaro eight man uh -huh. TP which is amazing that has the stove jack uh -huh. bring the stove we are bringing it on the moose hunt that's what me and him are staying in we're not going on a float this year but even with the moose i mean even with the um with the stove you get some wet wet days and everyone's stuff is wet and you can get in there and yeah dry, and dry it out, out right? and the eight man is big we can all hang out in there we can or, cook yeah. in there we can do whatever we want in there yeah and you know they're fairly quick to put up you know uh, yeah, you? Oh, yeah. and you could put it up in some crazy weather Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not like the tent you're putting the poles together and this thing's going to fly away. Like, you stake it down, put the pole up, and boom. Yeah, it sets up in, like, one minute when you know what you're doing. Yeah. So. I just um, airdropped you a photo real quick. Um, before we, we jump off this and we can close it out here, I this is a really cool photo of um, um, oh, Eric um, came in. Uh, he had just guided Denali. Uh, with that. Oh, okay, okay. I think I have that picture here. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, he he had a picture of that mega light. Oh yeah, because they use it, it in the camp, right? In, in the in the snow camps. Right. Yeah, and they had it all set up, dug out. It's pretty cool. I just sent it to you, Daniel, uh, or I put it in the shared album. Oh, okay. So take a look at that. AWP. There it is. Yep. Oh yeah. So it's a pretty cool. So initially, that's what, what it was invented for or made for was for um, expedition uh, climbers base, base or camps. base camps. Mm -hmm. And they dig out the hole, as you can see here, and they leave a center part where the pole is. So it literally is probably like 10 feet tall yeah. with that mm -hmm. center ring where you can sit down and build your little snow seat and all that stuff. And then pack all the edges so no wind or anything gets in there. Mm -hmm. They've got the cook pot. Yeah. Yep. kind of a cool like you know it's it's a it's a four season Super tent slick, yeah it's a four yeah. season tent you can use it summer it's great and there's also the bug net insert accessory that you can purchase for that oh you can yeah, yeah. so and it, it i don't know anything about that it attaches to all the little d rings there oh, okay yep and yeah, it's just an like, insert and like so you that, added, that's what i need you yeah. lose space because you have more material now kind of draping in oh it drapes in you so it's hanging on, on the outside, outside. Yeah, I mean, but it, it also so eliminates taut, you know that condensation if you get that condensation that drip my uh -huh. brother's bringing his for that reason if it's raining you're going to be in there a lot and you're bringing uh -huh. it in and, and you're cooking in. and it's getting condensation yeah. it's yeah. not going to drip uh -huh. on you okay yeah 
you should get it just to have it. I mean, you never know you're gonna. And take it just it goes around the edges on the inside. Yeah, All, the whole inside or the just whole the inside, edges? like like a cone, like tr- oh, like really? that, and yeah, it attaches to the seen, bottom yeah. and so the top. It, it's coming up where the pole is then. So it's like yeah. another TP within so the TP. It's a TP uh, within oh. the TP. Yeah, gotcha. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. All right, and All right. you can just use that as a TP. If you like, you want just like a bug. Well, thing. you can essentially mm-hmm. put it up like you would a regular tent, where you have like the base tent, and then you put the fly over it. Essentially, that's what you'd be doing. So you'd be like putting the net up, yeah, yeah. and then draping the tent over it. All right, right, but like Daniel was saying, if you're just killer weather out, but just every a- ske- mosquito in the damn state's out there, you can just throw that up as a bug net and just mm-hmm. hang out inside of there. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Or even yeah. sleep in it if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Under I was stars. hoping that it was like more just on the edges on the outside. You know, or like to block it. Yeah, I thought it would that's be a good like, idea. like, um, like a you little, know, like the little, like a skirt that yeah, goes around it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just feel like, too, if if you're just the application of why you're taking it in the elevation and where you're, you're camping, bugs are really not that big of an issue most of the time. Yeah. True. So, true. You know. You're sleeping at four or five thousand feet. Yeah, you typically don't have bad. They'll be there. They can be there. I'm not saying yeah. they're not. It just it's yeah, less yeah, likely. It, it I depends what range you're hunting. I mean, like yeah. the river bottoms, like thirty five, four thousand. Oh, I bet they're and gnarly. Like, and that's I yeah. mean, when you're making your way up in these things. I'm gonna take a quick yeah. break, and we'll come back to some of the other stuff. Let's do it. Big Ray's The Alaskan Outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Ray's has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. At Big Ray's, you'll find brands like Carhartt, Brundens, Darn Tough, FXD, Okiwear, and more. Big Ray's is your one-stop shop for both outdoor gear and rugged work attire. Check out their new exclusive line of durable but affordable waders inspired by and named after the majestic Aralik River in remote western Alaska. The Aralik wader was designed by Alaskans and proven for the diverse waters of the last frontier. Visit Big Ray's at any of their five locations statewide, two in Anchorage, two in Fairbanks, one in Kodiak, or check them out online at BigRays.com. Tailored Restoration, helping Alaskans turn disasters into new beginnings since 1972. Their 24-hour services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, and repairs. Tailored built its reputation with years of committed and reliable service to the community with innovative restoration and home remodeling. When you have an unexpected home issue at the most improbable time, Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you anytime, day or night. Tailored Restoration has locations to serve you in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Give them a call at 907-344-1239 or make an appointment today at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and Overlander products. If you want to customize your vehicle, talk to the team at Total Truck where you'll find their expertise along with top brands such as ARE, RSI Smart Caps, Goose Gear, Eye Camper, Front Runner, Rigid Lights, Rhino Lining Bed Liners, and everything you need to outfit your truck or SUV. Want to turn your truck into a sleeping option? They have rooftop tents, custom camping equipment, electronics, and solar energy packages to keep you powered up deep in the backcountry. Stop by their store location on Dowling between the new and old Seward Highway or check them out at TotalTruckAK.com. So are we going to go ahead and shift over to the gear that you brought in today? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Right. Let's do that. That thing's kind of heavy. I got a bunch of sh- sh- stuff in there. Um, so, what's that? Yeah, yeah, bring that over here. Oh, you can go that way. Um, so, what I brought. Um, oh, I thought you were going to put it in the middle. Okay. So um, I want to talk about the um, Wrangle gear um, out to, out of uh, Nanochik, I want to say, Homer yeah. area. Yeah, no, no. Um, he has a bunch of other stuff. Um, I was really interested in his captain's duffel bag. Um, he was graciously enough, um, 
gracious enough to let me take one to go test it out. And believe me, I tested the fuck out of this thing. Um, this bag has gone with me on every ATV trip I've gone. What I did with this bag um, is I basically made it a tool bag. Um, let me take this out real quick. So inside of this bag... Um, I believe it's made out of the X pack. I got I got tools. I got straps. I got extra a pump. I got a whole socket kit. I got um, toilet paper. I got everything that you would need in case something really went down. Right, rope, things like that. Um, this bag, I never felt as if this bag was going to tear. I never felt as if this bag was not going to be able to hold the weight as you felt it. I mean, what is that like forty pounds? Yeah, that you had, and that there's yeah. still room for more stuff in there. Yeah, totally. Um, the zippers are sturdy. This this this, this little um, loop thing that he has on both sides f- perfectly attaches to the back of the six by six through the loop, and then it connects. So that thing is mm-hmm. just strapped. I mean, I'm driving within the highway back there, just strapped in. This can also come out. These little these little. Uh, I've only seen QU have these straps. Yeah, that yep. disconnect. Yeah. Um, what are these little snap things they called? Name. They're like side buckles or something. But anyway, so you yeah. could switch it if you want to put it on that side or if you want to put it on this side. Um, I will say that um, it does say that it's water resistant, um, not waterproof. Um, and the reasoning that was given was because of the zipper, which is pretty much waterproof. But with anything, um, there's going to be a gap when you close the zipper. But I left this thing in the back of my four-wheeler um, outside during this torrential summer that we've had Mm -hmm. and it's sitting in standing water and it would get moisture after a while Mm -hmm. so i mean and i was i knew that i knew that it was it would happen he did say it's not like 100 percent waterproof it's not a submersible right um which is the next bags we'll get into um but as far as like the durability and to be able to put your tools in there i have no doubt that this thing can hold 60 70 pounds Mm -hmm. and you're not going to worry about it tearing at all um, the zipper, I've had zero problems with the zipper. I took this thing clam digging. My kids are sitting in it. My dog is jumping on it. Um, <laughs> and I got some really good pictures here of, of, of using it. Um, there's B, we took it on the Eureka trip, you know what I'm saying? And so basically, oh, yeah, I was checking it all out. to me, I used it as a tool bag, um, to just kind of keep all my stuff in there and it's easy to take off. Um, when I needed to dry it out, when it was sitting, I just bought it in the garage. I took some of the stuff out and it just dried out excellent excellent um here's a little video of me i'm like spraying it down because it was just full mud fest after uh one of the trips um none of the water really seeped in there that wasn't like there was like a lake in there or anything like that um yeah because it's not 100 percent waterproof no but it cleaned it up like really yeah, well because it was caked nothing wet inside yeah, yeah it was caked and dusty after like the eureka trip i want to say so i just gave it the full rinse down with everything still inside and the zipper yeah. all zipped up um there it is attached to the six by six. Oh, that's you can see how it is. And you could snug it up right there. So it ain't going to oh, go nice. anywhere. Um, so you don't have to use a bungee cord or a strap I, or anything. Exactly. So there's not an extra thing to strap it down. Yep. It's got the two handles on the side, the two handles on the far ends. And you rode, you rode like that. I rode with it like that. It didn't bounce out. It didn't, I didn't feel like it was going to be going anywhere. It was super, super snug. Um, it did come with an inner bag, which I haven't used yet. It was a little thin. Um, I haven't used that yet. But what I have used is his other little bag that is the same material. And I've made this bag. Um, there's a good picture of it there. Basically, this is my bathroom bag. So in this bathroom bag, the zipper is super, super high. has a, the mollies there if you want to attach it to something. Um, but in here, I have all my toothbrush, my toilet paper, dude wipes, my glasses, everything in there. And this thing, and this zipper is like heavy duty. It's got the little handles there to like keep it tight. It seemed, seemed. Um, yeah, so this thing is just like Yeah, legit, that's the dude. external pocket. That's the Wrangle external pocket. Okay, that's what it yeah. is. Okay. It's designed to go on his pack, the expedition style pack. Yep. So this thing would be great for um for what I'm using it for. It'd be great for like a snack bag. Mm-hmm. It could be great for a camera bag. Um if you're putting like batteries and stuff like that cuz yeah. it's not going to get yeah, charging, wet, you know what I mean? Charging devices. Um but I will say, if it's sitting in standing water, there's going to be some water that seeps in there. There's going to yeah. be some moisture that gets in there. Um, but like 
rain and things like that and you're just riding like this thing is yeah, it's it, fine it can be out yeah it's well, fine yeah that's why i asked about that picture because just by looking at it it looks like a regular bag but you could tell it's super stitched and if you just yeah, really durable yeah if you put a regular bag and strap it down to whether it's a side by side or six by six and you put that amount of pressure um on the on the hooks on these oh, hooks on these right hooks? here yeah yeah very durable. Right. And you're going down. And I'm talking terrain, rallying, like, dude. Rallying. Yeah, and I'm looking at it now, and it's not even. No, I mean, this thing was It's not torn. Rallying. It's not worn. Yeah, I was a little skeptical about these side handles and, like, the st- where it stitches. The stitching's very well but done. It's, it's really stout, man. He's got it. Pick that thing up. No, pick it's. A, it's uh, he's got a double no, wall. pick the whole thing. I mean, it's heavy, dude. I mean, I got it's, a lot of. I got a whole like socket 40, set like in there. It's in there. Oh, it's a toolbox. Yeah, yeah. it's my toolbox. So basically, it's my ATV toolbox. What, what it's really nice is it's not like square like a box. So I could still smash yeah. it in somewhere, yeah. right, squeeze right. it in wedge somewhere, it, you know, shit in pull it time. out really quick when you need it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's worked great it for can that. Get wet, it can you know get dirty and muddy and. I mean, I'm sure you could right find up. yeah other material, other um, things to use it for. That's just what I've used it for. I've been really happy with that. I think that it is a great bag um, to for four wheeling or for your boat. Um, which which was intended for originally the captain's duffel. Um, I've seen some Super Cup pilots that put their emergency gear and stuff like that in there. Um, it's just something like I, I feel confident I could throw this thing off the side of the mountain, let it roll all the way down, and all my stuff's going to be in there. Like yeah. it's not going to break open. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if I mean people can't see it on on the camera or whatever, but well, they could see it on the TV there. If yeah, if you zoom in, you you can see these aren't just like decorative lines that are put on there like this thing is stitched yeah what's yep. that material called again it's uh, x-pack x-pack yeah the whole thing is stitched it's like reinforced the whole yeah. bag mm-hmm. yeah so it's pretty not, killer material yeah i mean it's that they say that that is a wet a waterproof material but like i said if it's sitting in a p- puddle of water for days and days and weeks it's gonna su- it's uh, gonna stop some stuff seams. unless you have a dry out bag yeah then yeah. Yeah. i don't care what you put in yeah, Since and when you take all the day, stuff on there, that wet. thing rolls up to nothing. It's super light, super packable. The stitching is great. I love it. I love this bag even more. This thing has gone every single place with me, mm-hmm. and I could put all my bathroom stuff in here. I mean, I got That's my toilet cool. paper. I got yeah. all my all my stuff it's in here. First kit. aid kit. Um, what would you say this is the size of what in comparison? Hmm. Like, like a, a ta- small tablet? Yeah, it's, it's like a, a tablet, uh, but yeah. like the thickness. I mean, this thing okay, is stuffed in a there. A Kindle. So I mean, like that's the diameter, but it's a, but it, when you fill it, it's a, it's, it's like a first volume. aid pouch, is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like if you need a first yeah. aid kit, right. and small, it's small football, yep. and it's very, very I well say it's highly water resistant. Highly water resistant. Highly water yeah. resistant. So you're gonna keep all your like it, it'd be great for the first aid kit too. I mean, which I have in there. Because it's going to keep everything dry in there. And the toilet paper, which you don't want to get wet. You know what I'm saying? And it's so, rugged. Um, I know that he is Here. selling this stuff on his website, um, wrangle.com or wranglegear.com. Gear.com, yep. Um, he also has them, I believe, at the store and sold dot. Now, Wilderness Way? Is that the store that's right there by um, the mall? Wilderness Way? I'm pretty sure it's Wilderness Way. Um, there, if you want to go put your hands on it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's what it's called. Um, Some other things that I wish, um, maybe some what I thought would be better, maybe some more handles for this, Um, some more little of these clippings on the corners or maybe on the sides if you wanted to strap it down Mm -hmm. that way um, would be really nice. If these were even maybe a little bit longer, Mm -hmm. um, because if you're going to go around a loop and tie it onto something, um, you could do that way. Um, But other than that, the thing is like bomb proof i like it a lot and the only place i've ever seen those straps is on those on the qu stuff is those little actually stone glacier might have those buckles too actually yeah these little these little clips i want to say they Side do too buckle deals i feel like i want to know what those yeah. are there they have a and you can see this thing i mean i rallied this bag i threw the bag i would just throw it in my garage or throw it in the back it was in the four-wheeler i'd stuff stuff on top of it and you could there's not a tear or a scratch even on the thing so um, can't re- recommend that enough. Check out their um, their stuff, wranglegear.com. He's got some really good duffel bags oh, and some other stuff he's light. got going on out there too. 
Um, the other bag, which I have 100% fallen in love with this bag. This is my boat bag. This is my river bag. Um, this is the bag I take when I go rafting. This is the bag I'll take if I ever go on any long expedition where it's going to be super wet. It is the sagebrush dry backpack um, and the sagebrush dry camera bag. Um, so they, this bag, the zippers are amazing. Um, I would say if you've ever like dealt with uh, Yeti, the old Yeti bags that had the zipper, it's the same zipper as the Yeti bags. This thing as well has been tossed around all over the place. I can fit um, a week's worth of clothes in this thing. I can fit the sleeping bag for a weekend and the clothes inside of this inside of this backpack. And I just throw that thing in the bottom of the raft, and I'm not worried about anything getting wet. It's going to be totally, totally enclosed. Um, they did make us this custom um bag that is a camera bag so inside of this camera bag let me pull up another picture of this thing the uh, sure dry hip pack it's a specific name um he he graciously sure put on our our logo on the front of that thing um it has a beautiful front pocket that can hold uh, batteries it can hold uh, sim cards little things like that little cleaning wipes stuff like yeah, that on this front i actually wanted to show you guys why don't you um, open that up real really quick cool, uh, i had this thing set up uh, for our uh, caribou hunt that we went on, and you got to grab that side. Yep, and that helps you open it. There you go, and it also helps you close it on the opposite side. So one cool feature um, <coughs> the mayor was just messing with was when you close these zippers. It's got these little side handles. I was wondering sides. what they were. I thought they were straps. That you could hang use, stuff, you, you, but you no. could do that too. You could do that too. That's I think it's a versatile feature, but it just so you can get it closed. I mean, it probably is one of the most heavy-duty zippers you can buy. That so, so, yeah, the front pocket, um, I actually had this set up. I had my um, Vortex adapter for my binos and my scope, and then I have spare batteries for the camera and my headlight right here al along with the, uh, the zip tip lubricant that you use to coat the, the zippers. you got to do right. that um, pretty routinely if you want to keep the zippers really healthy. Um, so we have our studio camera uh, is a Canon, um, small, maybe about the size of a football or so, mm -hmm. a little smaller than that. And it just happens to fit perfectly in this, uh, this sure dry hip pack. It's got this padded insert in there. And so the camera just fits perfectly secure in a padded compressed box, basically. So you could fit that. You could fit a, a drone. So, um, so then I would put a towel on top, obviously for just wiping stuff down if it gets any water or whatever on it. But then I was able to put the GoPro right on top and zip it up. And then I basically had both my cameras on me ready to rock depending on what I wanted, decided I wanted mm -hmm. to film. So and it was pretty cool to wear this on my hip and then be able to bust it out right, right. when I needed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously there's other uses for this bag. It's it's a hip bag. It's not a camera bag, but... And that buckle goes pretty wide, and it's really in fashion now, the over-the-shoulder bag crossbody yep. yeah. deal. And there's you space on, on these little side things. And then, I mean, if you're using this, I mean, you'd probably fit at least a six-pack in here too. So you're oh, easily <laughs> you're slinging um, if you, it. If you, you open this thing up right here inside of here, Brandon, if you pull the yeah. other bag that I have inside sure. of there. Um I bought this other bag oh, okay. from them. Um and my idea very, with this was going to be um it's very similar. It's the same bag actually. It's, yeah, same bag, it's just different colors. My idea with this was I'm gonna make this onto my raft. It's gonna have all the first aid stuff. It's gonna have all the tools you'll need. If something goes down, it's like Grab this bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is going to be the bag. Mm -hmm. And you can simply click, clip it onto one of the bars on your raft. Yeah. So it's going to have everything that you need in there. My phone can be in there. Everything that you definitely don't want to get wet. And it's easily accessible yeah. in an emergency. Right. Um, a tool if your um, your ore right goes wrong. Yeah. I'll have extra ore rights, things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, extra pieces, extra little tools. And it's 100% going to get wet. I mean, not going to get wet. My bad. And another thing that I noticed when you go to their website and stuff like that, like people have even used this thing kind of as a, um, like you keep it like this, it's not, you can use it almost as like a safety float. Mm 
Mm. You know what I mean? So you can grab this thing and literally throw it in the water at somebody. They're going to be able to grab onto that yeah, thing. Yeah. It's going to hold its buoyancy because it it's not going to lose its air. And the material is, I mean, it's so thick. It's so durable. It just feels like it's just. It looks like that. Uh, and it feels like the same material that they make, like, dry suits. Those mm. big Arctic yeah. mm -hmm. dry suits up, up on, the, on yep. the slope. It's got a little bit more texture to it. But I'm sure that's to help you hang on to it. Yeah. And but what I love it, about them too is is it's a lifetime warranty. I mean, you're gonna these guys are out of Alaska. That it's made in Alaska. It's made in Cake, Alaska. Something happens, you blow one of these things out, which I don't see happening, mm -hmm. um, or something like that. You just send it over there. Even if you get a crazy cut in it, yeah, with something that shouldn't have happened, they're just gonna put a patch on it. You send it over there, they're gonna fix it for you for free, or replace it, or replace it, mm -hmm. and yeah. you can get whatever color Great you warranty. want. They got all different kind of colors depending on what you want. Um, I can't recommend them more. They do be go, they do go to um, Sportsman Show and some of these other shows if you want to get your hands on some of their stuff. Um, the the only downside is the price point. Yeah. Um, the price point is it's it's pretty expensive, but you are paying for some handmade stuff made in Alaska. Yeah. This is not a huge company that's getting all their stuff sewed in China right. and shipping it here. And there's no warranty. There's no nothing. Once yeah. you, once those dry bags go done, we've rocked those Cabela bags yeah. for years, which are great. Um, you rip a hole in them. them. All, you all, have holes all holes in them. You're using yeah. the tape to tape them up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Just to get it through. Um, whereas like when something goes wrong with this, it's just like, hey, I'm sending it on down. Yeah. They're going to fix it and bring it back. And they'll be able to put your company's logo on there and stuff like that if, if that's what you want to do, your company's colors, things like that. Um, so all pluses, the minus is the price tag on it. But, you know, you pay for what you get, and you pay yeah. for, you know, American-made, Alaska-made yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. handcrafted right. really is what their items are. They get a roll of material and the zippers and the seams, and they build them by hand. Yeah. Yep. You know, they're all, the, they're all seam well. They're, they're not glued. They're all, they're all welded. Um, seams I mean they've thought it all through and it's really comfortable when you wear it as a backpack as well mm. um, what they put on the back and that whole backpack part comes and off and is that too. the day pack is that what that one is um, it is the biggest backpack that they run they do have smaller backpacks it has a really great outside pack um, so normally I'll put like yeah, that's the day. that black that's the that day black pack. toilet yeah. bag I'll put in the outside of this little pocket fits in there perfect and then I'll be able to put all my um all my uh, clothes inside, and it has this cool little side thing that you could put your rod. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You put your oh, rod on gotcha. the side like that. Oh, cool! Um, and the, the cool thing is, I mean, a lot of if people are rafting, you know that water sometimes gets in the side or whatever. It's not gonna get wet, dude. You yeah. do not have to worry about your stuff, right? You know, yeah. Re retails four forty for the pack, and it's like two forty five. Two forty five for, hit, for that hit pack. Two forty five is a small price to pay if you're using it, like you said. It, for your example, you're hanging yeah. that on your raft with, yeah, you know, or, or a thousand dollar, or south, a thousand dollar camera. Grab, grab this you know red I mean? yeah. bag or an right expensive here. camera. Or, you know, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the website right now. They make a whole damn gun case. Out well, of this. we're gonna oh, pull I'm that gonna, up next. It's coming up here in a second. Yeah, the the one thing I wanted to just throw out, like you know, just a real boots on the ground situation with the hip pack. In the way I was carrying it, I had my hunting pack on. So what I actually did is I put this on, my bino harness, and then I threw my pack on. And mm -hmm. what was really, really great was that where this was placed on my lower hips, it went right around the lower part of my hips so that my <clears throat> backpack went to its natural position. Mm. So I was actually able to buckle both and be comfortable. Yeah. The only downside was my range of motion was very limited because the mm. pack was on my thighs, like over my pelvis. So it was like walking... Just cruising, no problem. But once you had to start climbing a little or doing mm. some articulating, I was really limited. So there was a stretch there where I knew I wasn't going to get the camera out. I unbuckled it and yeah. threw it up on top of my pack and just yeah. buckled, it under my, buckled it under my top bag and then just went ahead and carried it. It was just much easier. So, yeah, this is the uh, dry gun case. Um, I call it a gun scabbard. They call it a, the gun case on their website um this retails i think for like 295 dollars. this thing is not cheap again to daniel's point it's handmade great equipment um 
I had sticker shock when I bought it, but I bought it. I've used the shit out of it in the last two seasons. Um, this is officially certified. This is a great gun scabbard. Um, some guys are hard case guys. Some guys are soft case guys. I personally, I prefer a soft case situation so they can just get thrown in the boat, thrown in the back of the truck. It can get thrown up and strapped on the side by side, four wheeler, whatever. Um, and then you can squish stuff on it. It's not boxed and square and has to fit in a thing or I don't have to bolt it to the side of my machine. I'm not into that. Um, this goes in my Argo trailer in the fat rat trailer. One guy will have a, a rifle on the Argo in case we bump a moose, but this will go in the trailer, you know, w over with a tarp over it. So God forbid the trailer dumps over in a creek or something. And now your equipment trailer fills with water. Your rifle is going to be safe. It falls out of the boat. You're handing it to your buddy out of the dinghy on the shore, going blacktail deer hunting, fumbles it, drops it into the, the tidal water right there on the beach. Your gun's wet. That's not a problem with, with this gun case. Um, it comes with, I wanted to show you guys I'll the insert. It. Okay, yeah. So the original insert it comes with was recommended to use. Um, it, I have no doubt it probably works good. For peace of mind for me, I don't know if you guys have ever bumped a scope before, but it's heartbreaking. And it does take a lot, actually, to bump a scope. I think that's an arguable debate, but I, I think you got to really bump a gun hard to, to bump a scope. And this, uh, my, my only reservation on this was that this is a very thin pad, really quick, easy and out grabbing your rifle out of it. So I think if, this, if you knew your setup was really secure and wasn't going to get bumped around, but it might get wet, this would probably work great. I'm pretty abusive on my stuff and where it's going, and, and this is a pretty rally rifle that's in here. Um, I went ahead and actually put a soft gun scabbard um, in it. Uh, Jack, you mind pulling that one loose? Yeah. So same feature as, the, as that hip bag with the little handles, so you can grab it and zip it. And then I've got an actual... Oh. So... Oh, it's, so you're on your own it's soft a case, snug, but it's in a soft case now. That's a little thicker. Thicker. So what's really cool about this design is they made it so you can decide what you want to do. What's your application? You want to run with a thin one, quick in and out, or do you want to put something more padded? If I'm running my stuff on the river, it's the boat's pounding. You got it in the back of the side by side. It's rallying hard. I just want it to be secure, dry, clean, um, and then you know. God forbid it falls. At least it's in a soft case. Scope's covered the whole nine. So um, awesome handle on that thing. If you guys notice, grab the handle, kind of lift yeah, it up. Yeah, notice it's, it's like a raft kayak. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so it's not it's, breaking. It's easy to grab, easy to get to. Um, it's not too much slop when you're carrying it. It's really, really nice there. It actually has, if I remember right, it. no, that one doesn't have the, sh the shoulder strap. That, that's, a, that's a different one but that I have. Could have been. Uh, it, but it, you can have the shoulder strap on it. Yeah. Um, or you could strap it to your ATV, like you said. Yes. Or your boat yes. or whatever. Yeah. Does it have it on the other side? No, just no. the one side. And this is for a, a, a harness for your shoulder if you were going to carry it that way. Okay. Um, I never find myself in a position carrying it at a long distance. It just goes from the big boat to the dinghy, dinghy to shore, jump yeah. off, pull the dinghy up, pull this out, stash it in the woods. I like the red. I like the bright red specific so I can mm -hmm. find it. Yeah. Right. right. If it's dark, obviously, you know, you can find it with a headlight, but... You know, you get camo pads, green pads. You know, you don't want to leave this one out in the green grass, marsh, marsh you know. So um, I found that to be a really cool feature, having those bright colors. Uh, very certified piece of equipment. I threw it in the water on purpose, but not with a rifle in it, just with the with the gun case. case. Verified it would float. It, it, it would float and would not take on water. Then I did put a rifle in it. And just to see what, same thing, threw it right in. Don't it will float with the rifle. Float it with the water. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Huh. Yep. It, this thing you can throw right out in the water in a river and it'll just float right down the river. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So it's watertight. Once you seal that zipper yeah. on the bottom, it, it's, but I must say, if you buy these products and you spend the, the buy once, cry once price and you're getting a good quality product that's worth the money. It's not worth the money to wear and tear these zippers and not mm. maintain these zippers. I was, I was You've got to put that. that lubricant on these zippers. Some might say, well, that's bullshit about a dry bag. There's a fail point. Well, yeah, obviously, if you unzip and zip this enough times, it is a fail point. However, 
if you lubricate these properly and take care of it, yeah. like when you clean your rifle or you wash your coolers after a trip or you do whatever to maintain your shit, mm -hmm. what's it's too literally much to a liquid ask you though. to you just, just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Dab you, you just do this when you when you wash when you clean your rifle, yeah. right? And, and you could use any. I've used I've used Vaseline. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's totally. the same, same Absolutely. thing. If you don't have their a special petroleum whatever. jelly of some sort, yeah, and just rub it on there, and it's gonna feel like. Zzz, In zzz, the market real today, quick. you're having you're seeing a lot more products with these sealed zippers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, systems, and th so the availability for those lubricants for these are, are, are yeah. a lot more prevalent than you know maybe when the stuff first started coming out. Totally. And you can call Sagebrush, and they'll send you it for free. They'll send you the lube because they want to see you keep it taken care of. And obviously, to Daniel's point, their warranty is unmatched. Fix it, replace it. Yeah. No questions asked. So, yeah. yeah. Really Sagebrush, good. great folks, great materials, unique story. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what episode that we had the, them on, um, but it's a good listen about the history of, of what they – Got the, themselves into um, who previously was kind of running it and the history behind that. It's and they kept it Alaskan. I mean, people try to gets. buy them out. You know, big companies, Patagonia, these other companies try to buy it, buy out their stuff, buy out their designs, buy out their um, their uh, patterns and stuff uh -huh. like that. And and they wanted to keep it Alaskan. And That's the awesome. people that built it were Alaskan, and the people that now own it are Alaskan. And you know. You get what you pay for. Yeah. They wanted to build these bags in a town that doesn't have a street light. Fact. It's pretty Take rad. Alaska. They and they got it. a lot of other cool stuff. They got a lot. If you're into kayaking, mm -hmm. they got really cool kayak bags that like fit exactly in, in the footbed of your mm -hmm. bag or on the top of your bag. And they can customize pretty much anything you want to do. So check out their website, sagebushdry.com. Is that what it is? Sagebushdry.com. Yeah. Yep. Um, really, really, really good company. Um, Wrangle Gear with their other more durable bags as well. The Black Diamond TB, um, the Kafaro Slick Bag. Are we missing on something? You had something? Oh, you're. Yeah, I, got, uh, I got a couple. More okay, items, let's get it going. Um, yeah. That I wanted to wanted to give a a, a big shout out uh, to Stone Stone Glacier, man. I I you know I I like to lay low on the whole. Not nah, been know, jump, on the, that jump, hat. jump 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 the bandwagon with uh, like gear. You know, you would sick at a Kuyu you know and be you out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. I got like all my gear is whatever stuff that's applicable to me and my. You're not what wearing I'm, what a I'm red doing. salmon fishing on the Kenai, right? I'm, well, not only that, it's just <laughs> I have some first light, I have some Sitka, I have some Kuyu, I have all yeah, of it, yeah. and okay. I have been reluctant to get Stone Glacier stuff because I was like, oh, it's another bandwagon thing. Oh, yeah. But then when I heard the story and I figured out where it comes from mm -hmm. and its roots, yeah, uh, I. Began to appreciate it a lot more. Mm -hmm. I wanted to try them out. Well, one of the big things was gators. Mm. I blow gators out, boys. Yeah. I you got a pair that are duct taped up because mm -hmm. I blew them out. Yeah, I have gone through probably five or six pairs of gators in ten years. I cannot keep a set of gators. Kuyu, Sitka, Or, uh, which other ones did I have? Two pairs of Sitkas blown out. You had a Kuyu pair. Kuyu pair I blew out. Not yep. because of the material, just because of the way I walk, I I rub my ankles mm. together somehow. I was gonna say the uh, OR ones, man. Those now those yeah. they, 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 yeah. they still got they got blasted. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> I I went the with OR the has uh, good rep. Yeah, I went with the uh, it was SQ two <clears throat> Alpine Gators from from Stone Glacier, and uh, I these are probably the most legit Gators on the market. Uh, quick plug. And you got them this year? Yeah, quick plug to Barney's. Barney's carries all Stone Glacier products. Um, you can find all these at Barney's. You can find them online, obviously. But most definitely go to uh, Northern Lights Boulevard to Barney's and check them out. So at any rate, uh, th these bottom straps are replaceable, which is cool. This is a fail point for a lot of gators. That was kind of a picture where, like, I think my first or second run throwing them on. Um, r really great product overall. Great stitching. Um, very durable. I really like uh, how tight and fitted they are, although it took some time to break them in. I got big calves, so the like medium larges were on the cusp uh, right there. They're pretty pretty bulged out, but I've got them since broken and wet and dried out. But the top buckle system is legit. I, that's another fail point for a lot of gators. Um, and 
I think the main difference that I notice yeah. um, is that bottom. This the, bottom like the rope cu- thing. The, 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 oh, this. Yeah, that, yeah, versus, yeah. versus, yeah. versus strap, a strap. The strap. Yeah. Right. Yes. It's like a stirrup almost. Yeah, that would be what you would mm-hmm. classify it as, as a stirrup. I, I thought it would be kind of bothersome. But I didn't. I don't even notice it. You don't feel it. Well, it probably sits right between it your heel notch. In that, yeah, oh, it just in fits that in that no, that yeah. that notch perfectly. The buckles. I was a little worried about rallying them. You can see these are pretty garfed up. Mm-hmm. These got like five or six trips, a couple hard hard packs on them. Um, the cuffs are what I needed on the bottom because what I like I said earlier, I rub my ankles together when I'm white walking, which really seems weird. But I, I've since noticed it where I'm like. Whoosh, Mm. Like I'm like I'm right. crossing over or doing something weird, and anyway, I blew out a pair of uh, Kuyu gators. But not to dive into this too long. Gators are gators, but the Stone Glacier gators are badass. I recommend that if you are looking for a new pair or trying something new, um, or just looking for something really durable, fit really well fitted, built. Um, I feel like though I'm going to get the most years out of these, mm. just already off the the abuse that I've. I've Did you put on. this on, or is it come? no? It came like that, and and like I said earlier, they're replaceable. So if you blow one of those out, you can replace them. That's huh. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a big, really easy to throw on and off. On that? Oh, that's a good question. I have some notes on that. They are those ones retail for one twenty nine, which that's pretty reasonable. I mean, a hundred, hundred and fifty for Gators is what you're going to pay. Um, I think that's pretty good. Like doesn't eighty nine to hundred dollar ones seem to really be chintzy and shitty, and then you get to that like one twenty plus, and you get some good gators. I think the main differences that I notice um, with like the ORs versus the Q versus this, um, obviously that this stirrup. Oh, that's huge. Is the first thing. This is very very heavy duty. Right. This is going to break. If it does, you said it's replaceable. But the other part is this Um, on the on the OR one. This is a Velcro. Correct. Eventually, that vocal gets done, and then you just you can't strap it down. It's just mm-hmm. flapping around. You got this thing that's flapping around. Um, the key one, this is a button. Mm-hmm. When your hands oh, are okay. cold and you've been going all day, it is a motherfucker sometimes mm-hmm. to unbutton this thing. Yeah, you just like it's cringe. It's just like, oh, cringe touching it. And then that button and that button can get bent. It can get smushed, and then it doesn't. And this is a different. This is a more of a buckle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice that this cinches in into its own pocket. Mine doesn't have that little thing. And it's just like it's just flapping around. It's just flapping there. around. So just a small little detail there. What kind do you have? The Q ones, which I've had. The U- Yukon, They've been good Yukon for me. Gators, I think those the Yukon Gators. And dude, I've had them for like I don't know, t- ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, they've, they've still been going strong. They, they That's why I haven't needed to buy any yeah. any other ones. Um, these are stretchy too. Mm, there's mm-hmm. a little bit of flex to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this material seems pretty soft. Are they waterproof? No, I mean, uh, um, all gators are essentially D- waterproof. D- this D- is D- that D- same R- material. This that X pack material that you can see that cross yeah, that cross, cross stitch on there, and it looks yeah. like they put Cordura on top of that. Yeah, yep. for the for that. So yeah, the abrasion resistance. The, the point right. of all gators is that waterproof. Right, we're water resistant. Yeah, yeah. That, but it I'm depends too. If you get ones, I mean, a hot tip, like you want them to be tight. Because if right. they're loose, yeah. that's just a point yeah. where water's going to come in. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's not like you're going to go fishing in these. You know no, what I mean? No, it's no. just for the quick, like, river cross or right. your mossy or snow. Or you're walking through brush and the rain's falling into your boot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, and and if you've, you know, ever hiked in the mountains with a big pack, you you brush your leg on a sharp edge of a rock, man, you shred your pants easily. Well, gators protect not you. That, I think this is the biggest... And if you're hunting down Game in the changer. down in the south yeah. southwest, I mean they're Rattle making a lot of these for snakes and, snakes and snakes, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't get bit. Yeah. No, great product. Really, really great product. Love these things. Highly recommend them. Can't wait to throw them on this season and get out in the field with them. You're gonna drive home with them on? I might throw those on <laughs> right now. <laughs> Shit, I'll put this vest on too. I uh, love that I, vest. So you know, it's funny we had. Um, Tyler on Stortz, mm-hmm. and he talked about this vest, and I went. We yep. were looking it up during that episode, and sure enough, man, when Chad yeah. hit me up, <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, uh, I'm. I want to. I want to get get down on the uh, on the cir- Cirque. Is that mm-hmm. how it's pr- pronounced? Cirque vest. So the Cirque vest is like a, I'd say, a light fill or a light down um, garment 
So not like a full goose, uh, you know, 800 fill style down. This is a very light in between, very much a layering garment is kind of what I purchased it for. U ultimately, I'm a vest guy. I'm a, I call myself a vestie. I just love wearing stuff without arms on it, right? Um, but this one also has the hood integrated into it, which I like. I happen to have a, a merino wool top that I thought would pair with this perfectly as like a full all day kind of like hike around, stay warm in the breeze, never have to take a layer off or put a layer on, and then you could always put a shell over this. So that that's what I purchased this for. Uh, now, I, unfortunately, I don't have any photos. Thanks for pulling some up. I was always wearing it as a mid-layer, so it was always covered by something. So I guess I just didn't get any good opportunities for a photo. So I apologize to listeners for that. But um, I did sit in the bear stand in the spring for hours on end with this, with a, th a thin puffy over it. Is it primal um, loft? It, it, it's, so what's the insulation? Uh, it's probably good. their own. Pro it's not primal loft. It's, um, that's a good question. We sh I should know the answer to that. Um, it's it's whatever their fill is. They they because yeah. they have their di their different levels, but um, this is a great garment. This is a great piece. If you like vests, um, I, like I said earlier, the hooded option is great. If you got a little bit of a breeze going, maybe you got a nice thick hoodie. You throw that on. You throw that hood on. Block the wind. Um, yeah, great. It's piece. not bulky. It's primal uh, loft and pertex. Pertex. That's the what I was. Oh, Pertex is the outer layer. The Pertex outer layer. is the outer layer. So yeah. it's like Primal a water resistant. Yeah. 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 So it's it's light. It's packable. Um, great for maybe you're going to go run a long sleeve in a hot day on a, on a scout or, or a stock or something. And then it's getting a little later. It's starting to get a little breezy. You're sitting there glass and now you want to throw that on. It's just kind of a nice added piece yeah. um, to that. It's, now, I didn't. It's like well tailored. Mm. Uh, that was the thing though it's it, it is my size but i'm a little bit thick in the midsection right now so i would say that i definitely need to trim up a little bit for that to fit better and i'm not going to go to stone glacier and be like your fucking hoodie vest doesn't fit me good it's like well you lose some weight dude <laughs> so <laughs> that right. thing is like you know for a large frame without huge side handles so we're working on that but that is a very fitted vest and to that point it makes it great for layering because it's nice and tight. You can put another layer over it. You don't feel extra bulky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, really I love a vest garment. for sleeping. I have my... Um, oh, I slept in it too. Yeah. My Q down one. I I think I want to switch to this one. The down one's good, but then it gets mushed up when you're laying on it all the time. But it's super warm. It doesn't have the hood, which I like the hood. Mm -hmm. And I like this thin, but yeah, warm because then you're not too bulky. Like when you're sleeping, I love to sleep in. Bag? I sleep with the vest on oh, okay. in the sleeping bag. The hood's nice if it's too. really cold. If it's going to be a really cold night, mm -hmm. because I, I get really constricted, and then if that vest on, you don't feel like you have anything on, mm -hmm. but you're still your core staying warm. Right. Yeah, and the hood's nice too for um, just like light blocking. Mm -hmm. Just put the hood on; it covers your eyes real nice because it goes mm -hmm. real down, real low. Mm -hmm. Wraps around your hat real nice. I mean, they you said it; it's tailored nicely. Very, very well fitted. That's beautiful. Straight built for the runway, baby. Yeah, it's a good good garment. You and could I, probably take that right from the field to the club. Oh, yeah. Easily. <laughs> oh, it's stylish, man. I wear that with flannels and stuff. Man, you know it, dude. Full dad bod. But yeah, I wanted to share that. That was a really cool, you know, I got a chance to purchase this stuff early in the spring, got a chance to use it. I would like to do something strenuous in this and get it sweaty and, like, see what it does in terms of body heat um regulation and mm -hmm. that kind of thing but i'm i'm sure it's it'll Doing do just fine sweaty. i have and get it off right before you sweat well right right you know how that goes sometimes you, you get going on an early morning really cold early morning and you're kind of bundled up not planning for any kind of physical activity and all of a sudden you're like Ugh, did your long off. sleeve merino that you had under there was that hooded too yes okay it was yeah tight right so it's mm -hmm. a tight one so um, it was actually funny when I had that one down and I put that one up. I couldn't even feel it. Okay, back there, yeah. you know, because it has so much like room in the upper part of the neck. Yeah, you know, because it's made for wearing like big hats and shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I I like it a lot. It's not a bad price point either. Yeah. What What is that one? One one ninety nine. One ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. For that I mean, one. Good. Good jackets and vests are always going to be at like that two hundred dollar mark. It seems like. Yeah, right. You know, 
That's great. Um, That's great. Yeah, great pieces. Yeah, and I, I actually had um, a couple other cool little things. You know, I, I'm new to the game of archery. Mm. I've been shooting the last year, um, trying to figure out just archery in general. It's a lot to digest, and you can go full geek out, and I'm not really like a full geek out guy, but I am starting to get to know my uh, equipment a little bit. I'm, I'm starting to get there. It's a little bit old. It's not like the new technology, but one of the issues I had early this season was um, my release was chafing my, and forgive me, I'm a new archer, the, that... The loop? The loop. The release loop, the de-loop, whatever yeah. you call that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I noticed it was chafing it, and I'm like, huh. Which is going to wear out. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a while though, right? Like, it yeah. shouldn't take too long. I decided to shoot... With a little rain, just a little rain, and that thing got wet, <sighs> snapped that thing, busted an arrow off, hot mess, disaster averted, could have been worse, shooting in my backyard. Um, I thought, well, that's a problem. Oh, I yeah. wasn't even thinking about that ever being a problem. Mm-hmm. Being new to archery, I'm just trying to figure out how to like get my mechanics and shoot right, right. let alone the, the intricacies of, of a piece of equipment on this thing, right? So I go to full... Full curl, talk to Dave, talks me into the Spot Hog product. Um, I had previously had a true, true glow, true go release, true ball, excuse me, release. Made in America, great product. I don't know any different. This is what the bow came with. It's like the two prongs. Two, two prong release, like kind of like a really like Clyde. sensitive trigger. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't know any difference. I was just using that one. Well, then I got this $140 release, and then number one, I saw that on the wall and i'm like oh shit dude i thought these would be like 40 50 bucks yeah I'm like 140 Jeez. i'm like fuck <laughs> man when you said that, like. <laughs> well i got a new site which i didn't purchase it was given to me by a very awesome friend chad Arns. i think that was like a 300 dollars site so that was money adjustable with the tape yeah nasty yeah. site three yeah. pin awesome and then now I'm starting to have to buy my own shit for it, right? So I get it strong first time. Get some arrows. That's not as cheap as I thought. And then I'm like, wow, the releases are expensive. Like, mm-hmm. what is so, what about a release? Well, what they're made out of um, and the overall, like, release quality, right? Mm-hmm. So he says, throw it on and just go shoot. Second I threw it on and drew back, I fell in love. It was the sense of security in this, like, clip system that it has versus this one here that's just... Yeah, just a simple yeah. release. You wrap it around the loop and lock it. So oh, now I know it's locked. there. Draw back. My finger rests really nice right here. I mean, I got it just like just so perfect for my my length and adjustment. And then being able to pull back and then get all set up. I had some weird misfire shit happen where I sent arrows into the dirt mm-hmm. and some stuff when I got fatigued and tired. Where you start to kind of uh you don't go through your steps as yeah. smooth and you you i like i bumped that and i'm like oh so accidents can happen with bow and arrow too yeah oh, absolutely. some bad ones and i'm like well i gotta be really cognizant of this mm-hmm. learning right this pull i have yet to have an accident knock on wood also the release uh and um correction on um uh trigger panic or um jerk yeah the the panic Release panic, where you kind of like, it's almost like shooting a rifle, where you kind of know the... You flinch. Oh, you're, okay. you're flinching, is, is I st- was having a big problem with this release, was that 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 target panic, I guess is what they call it. Yeah, and you want it to surprise you. Yeah, and so with this one, I could click it, know it's good, pull, get set up, do all my checks, okay, now I'm on target, put it on there, I'm not worried about like accidentally bumping it, mm-hmm. so you gotta like put pressure on it. Mm. So that's, that's what I was going to add. So I don't know anything about archery. It's not my, and it's I'm not learning, my thing, so, you know? Yeah. But so that w- even with the pressure, when you take your finger from behind there, it's still going to stay it's locked and closed? Yep. So when it goes, boom. Oh, so it actually it, clicks. It clicks. Locked. I like that. I like that click. Oh. So I can pull back. I can go through all my checks. And then like a, like a trigger on a rifle, I can just acquire my target and then slowly pull so i'm not I wonder if that, that click like, though for some super silent guys is it a problem for them i, I, I wondered that too or by then it's so too what 
to the, the click. <coughs> they, like yeah. by the time a critter hears, like I mean, all the spot hogs make that sound. Yeah. Okay. Now the difference is that that one, um, that one clips. So <laughs> that one clips. At, it closes. The other spot hogs. Well, the wise guy doesn't. The wise guy is to the side, so you can pre So can you pull it. those up real quick, Daniel? Um, we'll just do a quick geek so, on these. So the spot hog tough guy and the spot hog wise guy wise guy have two different release systems. They're, they're, they're like almost identical in the sense of like how that, yeah, that purple one that's manufactured, except for what's cool about this one is versus the other one that Brandon had is that it, it's not like two claws holding at the end and so there's like um a oh, flat side that this one can ride against when he releases off of it okay so, so that's cool and then you also know that when you close it it's closed okay that's important we'll come back to it later but when you close it you know that's closed so you yeah. clip it it's on the y on on your d loop or your loop or whatever you call it everyone calls it something different and then um and then the sensitivity to that is like you just always keep your finger behind yeah. it. Like yeah. you never put your finger in front of that until you're like that's the last thing. Target you do. acquired. So and like, now you're, it's like it's like clicking your safety off your rifle. You're gonna right, shoot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, okay, so there's that one. Now, so this one, like Brandon was saying, that full curl was saying, Dave down there was saying that it, he's not gonna see the the chafing, and it, it makes sense, right? Because it's gonna ride off that like flat side. And he's just pulling yeah, away right from it, which is a oh. cool design. Like so that so I think this is like a newer there, one. And then, yeah, we're like like um, one of the most no famous. This is really just clean spot hog. What made Spot Hog famous is this Wise Guy release. So both of those are the Wise Go Up one. Go Up one. That's the Wise. They're all Wise Guys, but you see you see how it has just like like kind of like a hook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's where your line is, okay? okay? And this particular one, so it doesn't clamp on it, so you can preload this. So, like, and what's cool about, and I'll just show Brandon this yeah, too, but, like, when you're in the field with this and you're, like, stocking an animal, like, I, I well, for mine, I would preset it. So mine would be locked, this, like, Spock hog. It's locked forward. And then, you, you know, you have it on, right? And you can have it folded back. So mm -hmm. it's not like in your way. And oh. then when it's time to shoot, you can pop it forward. Okay. That's and, what yeah. you mean. In, in this particular one, these particular ones like really like stay in the position where yeah, like that, there's that, a lot of like flimsy that ones. That pivoting um, perch that it's on is like <sighs> built with this nice pressure that just, and I like it because I'll shoot arrows and walk down to the target, fold it back and then pull all my arrows yeah. out and it's not in the way clinking around. Mm, it'll, yeah. stay, it'll stay folded back. It stays back. folded yeah. back. So I yeah. have it like under my shirt. Gotcha. And then when we start the stock, then I then that's when I Roll set mine. But so like one of the downsides with the spot hog is you see you see it the hooks out. So this is like in the closed position, like what Brandon's is right now with it closed. That's it in the closed position. Okay. It appears that way. You could still lose it. But but that trigger could be just right there and you can't tell. And so and that hook is loose then, and it could be in that position, and you think it's good. Oh. And it, if you don't check that before you go, which will create that click mm -hmm. like that that you'll have to do, then you pull in right away. You like you get a little bit of poundage, and then your arrow flies. You know, mm -hmm. so it's real. Like this one, I've always had to be extremely careful that I'm pushing forward on that to make yeah. sure it's locked before I do anything. Well, and it's my perception that like good archers use that one. Because they're so well versed in their practice of of that, uh, yeah, of that system. Because I, I think maybe the release is a little smoother, a little quicker, maybe. Well, what's cool about I'm that totally is sure, that but this particular run where that little hook is out. I mean, when when you hit the trigger, that is free spinning, so that's loose, like it just leaves. Oh. So there's nothing that could like resist it. Got and it. what I've always like kind of had a problem with these clip styles. That's not it might, it. His yeah. new one looks really good, so I'm not going to look at that one. But if you're, like, pulling this, like, and, and it has, like, pinchers on it, it's like, how do you know that it's coming straight out? And it's not, not like, rubbing against one of yeah, the other and pinchers. Then, and then, like, mm. kind of 
gives it like just a little bit of torque and how does that like reflect on your shot 20 30 40 yards down the way especially if like you're trying to so bad with that thing if you're trying to surprise yourself this is just moving out the whole time it's not like a wall like both of the spot what both of the spot hog products are a wall so you're pushing it's not slowly moving it just releases got it so and what's cool is what they did with this pincher style for Brandon's new one is that when it does go, it's, I think it's running right on that. So it's like, this moves away. So there's nothing to like impede. So it can't hang up. It just needs to just release yeah, right off the, right up. off that sidewall yeah. clean out. So it looks really cool. And when you go to the website, when you used to go to the website, I haven't been the website in years, it's like, it was like the wise guy. But now when you go there, it's the tough guy. It's the top thing. Yeah, so it, it's this, like it looks really new. cool. Oh, yeah, and I wanted to share that just because we again we talk about tents and gears and bags and boots and and packs and all that, and this was just something new to me. Uh, obviously, we could probably get somebody on here that we could just run circles around us with the knowledge and information and oh, the yeah. breakdown of the design of this whole thing and and what how important all that stuff is. Because to true hardcore bow hunters, I'm sure the release is everything. Yeah, yeah. the same as the you know mountain site and well, like a trigger. Well, it's crazy. The releases yeah. didn't even exist. Like we were growing up shooting bows, and like none we no one had releases. Yeah, you know right. these are all like newer things. Mm-hmm. But I think that yeah. wall, going against the wall where you can be surprised just like a rifle trigger is important, yeah. you know, and like those other like thumb ones, like those are all based on a certain pressure. Yeah. So so you're getting surprised. You're getting surprised. Like this one is just, this other one, your old one, it's constantly opening. Like, so yeah. it's getting hung up. It's going to go at a different time each time. Mm. Yeah. Right. So that one, you know. Like a yeah, rifle, just, yeah. Just, once you you're slowly hit that mark, it just it, it goes. Yeah, and it clicks, and that one, you're yeah. just anticipating. Yeah, you're slowly, waiting yeah. for it to. Yeah, to I just fire when, off, I get, when I get fatigued, I would get really sloppy with that release mm. timing and target panic. And with this one, I I still after getting you know you throw forty or fifty down there and you're you're rushing yourself and not taking a break. It can. Tire you all quick, but there's just peace of mind to this, I guess. I f- and, yeah, I feel like I, that's I wa- safer. I wanted to feel totally. safe about it, and it improved my overall shooting, I think. Um, again, great product, Spot Hog, tough guy. Go down to full curl. Dave carries these in stock. Uh, I'm sure uh, Screaming Eagle, some of the other archery shops in the state, all carry these. This is like the top kind of brand uh, release, I guess, yeah. uh, looking into it, but... Great product. Check it out. If you don't already have one, there's probably a lot of guys that are like, yeah, I've been rocking that shit for years, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just learning, and I like to I like to get good shit once and not yeah. have to buy it three times. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I'm down for that. But I think that covers everything, gentlemen. Yeah. 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 So um, if anyone wants to check this stuff out, all this stuff is purchase- purchasable here in Alaska. Sure is, um, man. Mm-hmm. So it's all local stuff. If you have something else that um, we should try or something you want to mention, let us know. Um, if you want to check out the specs and the details, go to these guys' website. Oh, They're all legit websites, and go check out their stuff. Better, beautiful websites for us. Um, right. So this is just stuff that we've been testing out and using and, and things that we've learned to trust and, and pros and cons of that. So um, if you have something else that you want us to try out, we're definitely down to uh, take some stuff out and rough it up oh, and, yeah, and we'll see how it works. Oh, yeah, we'll shit out of it. And if it's, if it's shitty, we're going to say it's bad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because no, nobody wants to go out, you know, on their on whatever trip you're going on and have some gear fail. Yeah. So no, not at all. That's uh, hopefully what uh, you learn f- take away from this. Yeah, yep. Um, thanks for sharing, guys. Thanks for your time yeah. putting in all Great the stuff, uh, Mayor. Thanks for coming in with the of course with the hot sauce. That's what I'm here for. Salsa, salsa, oh, yeah. salsa, salsa. not sauce. We're going salsa. Food and commentary, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You're always you're always an awesome. <laughs> shit. And it was an awesome addition to a show. And thanks for so thanks for bringing for. it. Yeah. Good to see you too, Jack. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. been fun. I know we're about to go real hard in moose hunting season here. Yeah. Turn, turn and burn. I think Daniel's gone next Thursday. Yeah. Jack, you're right behind him. Yeah. 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 I leave on either Thursday or Friday. Yeah. yeah. Me up before y'all leave. Friday. Yeah. Get that salsa. Yeah, yeah send the salsa, salsa out to yeah. the field. I'll bring some right. salsa. He just, he just, sure. he just meets you yeah. out at the mailbox yeah. with the salsa. Can I put an order in for twenty packets? <laughs> <laughs>
20 packets. I don't even have packets, but I get you some jars, man. You can sit at home and spoon them jokes. Put those suckers in a snack Ziploc. That's right. I mean, I do have those big vacuum packs. Yeah, we need a vacuum seal. With the. Oh, shit, oh, that's not a bad idea. The Ziploc bags, but they're vacuum seals. Yeah, I just... I mean, I've never done it, so I'm kind of... You kind of kind of freeze it first. ...about how, how long it's going to... I think you could take individual, like a 12 by 8 zip pack, like the Zep, Zep brand um, dry bag or uh, uh, vacuum pack bags, and just fill it with salsa for like one for every other night or whatever. So you're going to bust out a bag of chips, you're going to bust out the salsa, you fill a whole bowl, mm-hmm. and just eat it. It doesn't like get, you know, closed back Very up, sealed, put back yeah. in the cooler. It's just a one yeah. open, and I, the salsa is going to get eaten in one sitting. I promise you that. Right. Either the water eaters are going to run out first or the salsa is running out first. Yeah. But to other. Ziploc <laughs> salsa, you almost need to freeze it. Oh, that would change it, though. Or to vacuum seal it, I mean. Like, I, I don't know. It's too runny. So you, even in a chamber. No, uh, it'd like be kind of weird. Hmm? It's going to be running forward. I was just thinking of a way to, to carry it safely. Maybe if you took out some of the bottom layers and let it, like, fall more in your chamber, it would work. I always freeze it first. So. Geeking out here, boys. Yeah. Right here. I'll give you the coordinates. Right. You just do a drop. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, you just tell me how many <laughs> bottles you want. To Jump free, out, so. It's already made. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Alaska, for listening. Thank you for all the Patreon members. Patreon.com slash Alaska Wild Project if you'd like to support the podcast. Um, big shout out to all the sponsors. Please support the sponsors. Um, they are supporting us. These are companies that we back and people that we know, Alaskans that are small businesses that are um, providing services for all of us to use, and, and we back all their stuff. Um, thank you to all of them. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, uh, Brandon and mm-hmm. the mayor for coming out. Thank you. Alaska, thank mm-hmm. you for listening. We appreciate you. Check out the website, alaskawildproject.com, for all the merch. And uh, we'll see you next week. Stay wild. You remember my speaking to you of what I call your overcautiousness. Are you not overcautious when you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing? The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Big Rays, the Alaskan outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Rays has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. Check out their new exclusive line of Aurolic Waders. Big Rays for all your outdoor gear and rugged work attire. BigRays.com Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects that may be high performing and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, Alaska's year-round professional property maintenance team. Services include weekly lawn care, custom landscaping, 
fertilizing, weed control, turf repair, and more. Schedule your free estimate at LawnProAK.com. Alaska's OG Cider Company, Double Shovel, crafting gluten-free colonial-style ciders, founded as a healthier non-inflammatory brew option. Drop by their pop and tap room in Anchorage off of 58th and Arctic or visit the second location in Kodiak. Double Shovel, award-winning ciders. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at backcountryhunters.org. Should you not claim to be at least his equal in prowess and act upon the claim? I say try. If we never try, we shall never succeed. This proposition is a simple truth and it's too important to be lost sight of for a moment. If we cannot beat the enemy where he now is, we never can. It is all easy if our troops march as well as the enemy, and it is unmanly to say they cannot do it. <laughs>